Hey guys how are you friends what if Naruto x made time travel movie? Down in a landmark called the Valley of the End, a battle had raged on for a long time, it was a battle between two best friends and rivals, even though they were young, they were very strong, if the lava and huge gouges in the sides of the valley were any indication, the two boys decided to end it by clashing with their ultimate attacks, that had created a purple sphere of evil chakra to form around the two of them, why? Well, they were both using dark powers, one was Sasuke Uchiha, who was using the power of the curse seal and at level 2, the other was Naruto Uzumaki, who was using the power of the terrible Kyubi no Kitsune. Then all of a sudden, the sphere exploded, sending the traitor Uchiha into the leg of the his ancestor, Madara Uchiha, as Naruto was shot out, all of time seemed to slow down and then seemed to stop, while he had also stopped and was floating just above the water, time had literally stopped, for everyone and everything. Naruto's mindscape Naruto woke to see the cage of his prisoner, he really wondered what was going on because even the dripping water had stopped in midair in his mind, what is going on? Time has stopped young one, I did this for one reason only, to tell you the truth of everything that has happened and what is to come, also to give you choices of how things will go, for you see, things are not as they seem, I wish to help you young kid, for I have seen the timeline, he would have said more but Naruto interrupted him. What the hell are you talking about? Nothing you are saying is making. This time it was Naruto who was stopped mid-sentence, that was because Kayubi's form had started to change, the fox began to shrink into a form that not even he would expect, an older version of himself. Now that I have your attention, please let me continue. At this, Naruto nodded dumbly, now, we biju are not what we seem and your future is alterable. We biju are part of one entity called the Jubi or as very few know. Kailina, the queen of time, she was the girlfriend of the six paths sage not the entity he contained within himself like the stories go. He also had an apprentice that, in the end, betrayed him and killed Kailina. The Six Paths Sage did the only thing he could do with the power that was unleashed when she died. He split it up and sealed it into the timeline itself, which Kailina had shown him how to access, if he had not done that. There would have been one of left alive as everyone would have been turned into possessed sand zombies. Now, Kailina was not originally from our world, she came from another world where there were brutal wars, and it seemed that she could not escape that, luckily no one here knew it until she told him and his apprentice, which lead to the betrayal that she foresaw in the timeline and prepared for, at the Kyubi paused and saw that he still had Naruto's full attention, so he continued. So when the power that she left behind was sealed into the timeline. It stayed there for a long time and soon the power became sentient. Thus the creation of the biju had started, Eventually we found ourselves in the reincarnation cycle and we gained the forms of future people. That is the main reason I have your form, for I chose the form of a future hero in time. The others were the same and we have turned into the forms of their eventual downfall. The forms of the demon containers, not only did we gain those forms but forms of animals that fit our nature. Once that was done, we escaped the timeline, but we were all weak with only one tail. So, we trained in secret, and as we grew in power, we also grew in height. Which lead to our secret existence being shattered. People feared our power and eventually devised ways of gaining our power. Though we saw our own demises in the timeline, we were not happy about it. Now, I have brought you before me to tell you that you are the person that will bring the power of time back together again, but Kailina will not be revived, her power will be yours and your destiny is your own, but if you do not defeat the dark entity that we felt in the timeline, then everything will be thrown into absolute chaos, and reality will cease to exist and time will cave in on itself to end the worlds that are connected by time. At this, all Naruto could do was sweat drop and say, no pressure then, huh? I guess you could put it that way, now you have three choices. These are all variations of what will and could happen. The first option is where Sasuke Uchiha escapes and you return to Konoha where you train for three years under Jiraiya of Asanin. The Akatsuki will gather most of the demon containers and kill many people, you defeat them, and Konoha is mostly destroyed in the process which is then his lead by Danzo as he slowly changes everything that the Sandame had created for the worst, he has you kill, and he unleashes the dark entity, at this, Naruto gulpled as all that seemed pretty bad, the Kyubi continued. The second option is where you bring Sasuke back, but the council banishes you. Where many things could happen, you die at the hands of Root. Which is lead by Danzo, you create your own village that is full with missing nins and other powerful people, or you become an outcast to the world where you become very strong, but in the end, you are not strong enough to defeat the dark entity because the Akatsuki has captured you and taken me away in resurrecting IT. Naruto gulped once more, 
This was something he really wished would not happen and not some destined hero, though this option seemed just as bad, if not worse than the last one. After the brief pause to let the information sink in, Kayubi gave Naruto the final option that was foreseen. The final option is that you disappear from the battle site and make the people from Konoha think that you are dead. This is the tricky part because this option is bathed in the mist that covers the unknown in the timeline. All that I know is that you gather all of the Biju's energy before the Akatsuki does, you return to Konoha and with the help of friends old and new friends that you make along the way on your journey, you defeat the Akatsuki and the dark entity that someone bathed in the mist but I know is an Uchiha will resurrect, the third option is bathed in mystery and there is no telling where you will go, or even when, now, choose. Naruto was shell-shocked. He never thought that anything like this would happen in his life, still though, he would need to think on these three options, the first option really sucked. He would go through all that training to defeat the Akatsuki, but die at the hands of some asshole by the name of Danzo. He quickly threw that option out the proverbial window. The second option is just a bit better, he could help all the outcasts of the world but he would either meet his end at the hands of Akatsuki or see that they are destroyed somewhat and see the dark entity, but he would not be strong enough to defeat IT, that option was too thrown out, and so all that remained was the third option that is bathed in mystery, one where he could possibly win in, the choice was obvious to even a little kid, I choose, option 3. Let's get this party started, Kayubi nodded at this and felt that his conscious self would soon end because of this decision. Reality so with that time started once again and Naruto's body glowed for few seconds before it shot off to the raging stream that sent him to wave country. Kakashi arrived just in time to see this happen and fall to his knees in failure as a teacher. I am sorry, I failed, old friends, he said as he looked to the sky and then pried the Uchiha out of the stone leg and set off back home, to the soon-to-be depression. With Naruto two days later, Naruto had found himself in front of the memorial his team had made for Zabuza and Haku. Naruto stared at it for a few minutes before Kayubi told time to take the blade. Naruto relented and took the blade, though when it was out, it began to shine with a strange lightning like energy that Kayubi had shouted was the power of the timeline. Then there was a very bright flash that had attracted everyone in Wave Country, including little Inari as he was close by, though that was not the problem. What was the problem was that Naruto felt searing pain as the Kayubi's power was ripped out of him and led into the blade as it glowed with power. With Jiraiya, same time he was talking with Tsunade on what to do on finding Nato as they had not believed that Naruto was dead, he felt something, a weird pulse on his person and a scroll flew out of clothes with the label yin on it, he widened his eyes as Tsunade was just very confused as to what was happening, the scroll then unrolled as the other half of Kayubi's power came out to form a sphere of demonic power and then flashed out of existence and into the blade in Naruto's location. That broke the old toad hermit as he fell to his knees, crying, I truly failed you Minato your son really is dead, that statement shook Tsunade to the core as she too cried that the necklace took another soul and probably itself with it. With Naruto when the light died down and Naruto was no longer in pain. He panted as he took a look at the blade only to gasp as it had changed. It was larger with what looked like blue energy was traveling along the outside of it and with a figure 8 symbol in the middle that glowed the same blue, it also had a few other odd designs on it as well, though as he looked at them, the final words of the Kayubi came to mind travel back to find the answers from the six paths sage himself, he was confused as hell but didn't get much time figure it out because he heard a voice. Naruto? Naruto looked to see that it was Inari, he smiled and said, hey, Inari, before passing out. Naruto awoke in a bed, in a familiar house from his mission to wave, he suddenly shoot up in a sitting position thinking, that's right, that stuff did happen, and here I thought it was a dreaming and I was still on the wave mission, mind as well say hi the right way this time. With that, Naruto slowly got out of bed and went downstairs to see the happy family talking about how Naruto got here, you know, I could answer those questions for you, he said surprising them. Naruto ni san, yelled Inari as he rushed up to his hero and gave him a hug. Hey, long time no see Inari, Naruto, could you please tell us what happened and why you are not in Konoha? asked Tsunami, Inari's mom. Of course, said Naruto as he told them the truth of what had happened and what the Kayubi told him. To say they were shocked was an understatement, they just stared at him like he had grown two heads. Finally, it was Tazuna who spoke, okay, I will believe you for now, mostly because I don't understand much about the ninja world, so tell me, do you really want Konoha to think that you are dead for now? I think it would be for the best, Naruto said, I will eventually go back, but I need to train and find a way to go into the past to save the world somehow. I want to train with you, please take me with you, pleaded Inari. You sure you want to be a ninja and travel with me? 
Yes. I want to be able to protect my family when the time comes. All right. But you have to ask you mom, at this, Inari rounded on his mom and grandfather and gave them the puppy dog eyes. Tsunami sighed and submitted, all right, but you have to train here for six months to a year so you both have what it takes to protect yourself, got it, she said. All right mom, yelled Inari as he thought this would be fun and easy, oh how wrong he was. So for the first month, Naruto literally trained Inari into the ground, he made the poor boy run around the entire village a few times a day, though the kid was not alone in this, Naruto himself usually ran and trained with his young apprentice. There was one thing that helped Naruto train Inari, and that was the scrolls that he had forgot about when he took it from the Forbidden Scroll that one day, he remembered that day since it was the second day that he had started living with the family. Flashback in time. Naruto was sitting on the couch after Tsunami told him that he would be living with them, they also said he would be getting new clothes soon too, so he was rummaging in it to get what he had out and what he found were the scrolls, he stared at them before Inari noticed and asked what they were, he told him that they were scrolls addressed to him but had never opened them. Tsunami then suggested that he should open them then. So he opened the red one and began to read, Dear Naruto. Hi son, I am you mom, my name is Kashina Uzumaki and I am from Whirlpool Country. Which was destroyed by Iwa, I came to Konoha to live a new life. I became known as the Red Death, now, I would tell you who your father is but you probably know who he is, or if not, I won't spoil it for you, know that I will always be proud of you, no matter when you are, I would give you some things to help you along the way but you already have it, or you will get it from your grandfather, that is all I will tell you, good luck my son, oh I have a better name for you to use, when you find out, Taimu Kohaku. With love, your mom, Kashina Uzumaki, p, s, if I am dead, then it is because a bastard named Danzo killed me. To say that Naruto was confused was an understatement, had his mom gone insane? He got the gist of it, but he didn't know what power she was talking about, how could he be a time traveler? Inari and the others were just as confused, but Naruto shook it off as he began to read the yellow scroll. Dear Naruto, I don't know what I should say, but I am the your father. The same man who sealed the Kayubi inside of you, yes, I am the fourth Hokage. I know you probably hate for it but I could not do that to anyone else's child if I could not do it myself, now, I have to thank you for the flying thunder god jutsu, I got the idea from you, but maybe I am talking too early, so, I will stop there, in the seal below is a few just you I would lick e you to learn, a few books on seals and a training regimen that you should use, good luck. Your father, Minato Namikaze aka the Yellow Flash and the 4THH Okage. This time Naruto thought that both of his parents were insane, but he just shrugged it off before unsealing what his father gave him. Flashback end, oh yeah, the training regimen had been very useful for him and Inari for the next four months, in the four months, he had gained a power to look at the timeline that was good and all but he could not see much of his future, so he looked to the past to see if it could help him and Inari with training, what he found made him really happy because he learned how to bend the elements. He did find it hard to teach Inari what he saw, so the sword that was forged from Kayubi's power. Formed an amulet for the kid so he could train himself. Sure Naruto had taught Inari the usual ninja skills, but that just bore the kid up to genin level, anyway, Inari had to make his own ninja style, so he taught himself the way of the waterbender. Tsunami had been a little miffed about that and when asked why, well it was not the answer they were expecting, it turned out that Inari's real dad had been an ex-ninja who lost his ability to use chakra, he was a water manipulator to the point that his bloodline let him turn into water. Inari was shocked but was happy all the same, the kid seriously threw himself into water bending after that and he also managed to unlock his bloodline in the fourth month that they trained in, he was now at mid chunin level. Naruto on the other hand combined two bending styles that he saw, they were air and lightning bending, he had to learn each individually and is still trying to combine them, Naruto learned a few other things as well, his father's jutsus were all cake but did the flying thunder god really throw him for a loop. It seemed that this jutsu was time based, his father had learned to manipulate time to make him go faster than any other ninja, but the jutsu was incomplete in the fact that he had to use those tri kanai to actually work the jutsu, luckily, Naruto had full control over the time element thanks to the blade, he could use the just you to the fullest affect and instead of a yellow flash, he was surrounded by the blue lighting from the timeline itself, and Inari had dubbed him the Azure Flash. Naruto had not stopped there, he created some of his own time jutsu, including the one he had been confused about from the very beginning, the time travel justu, normally, it would be impossible to do, but he has been to do the impossible, wave country is an example of that. Speaking of that place, it was like a second home to him and everyone treated him with respect, 
they even warned him about any Konoha ninja that came there, yep, this place was great, but he had only one month left until they were able to leave and travel the world. So right now, Naruto and Inari are at the place where Inari's stepdad was killed. You really think this will work Naruto? Asked Inari with a skeptical look on his face. Anything is possible Inari, besides, if this works, we could save him right before his dies, Naruto said as he hefted the blade on his shoulder. Oh that is another thing, you really need to name that blade before we go. Fine, how about the time blade, eh, good enough, now let's do this before I change my mind, Inari stated then said a little nervous. Alright, with this move, we will change time itself, oh and I don't think it is a good for you to see your younger self in the eyes, because I'm not sure what will happen, said Naruto as his friend nodded as he charged his charka into the blade and yelled out, time travel jutsu. There was a large electrical surge throughout the city as the two were taken back to a few minutes before Inari's stepdad was taken from them, they flew through a huge lightning filled area was a raging ocean below them and a lightning storm above them, they were hit by a lightning bolt and disappeared. They appeared in an alley not too far away from the spot, they quickly rushed to the roofs and raced to the spot that was surrounded by a fence, they could see if happened before them. Why could we have earlier? asked Inari I don't know, I was planning on going back a bit further, but something was keeping from doing that. Alright, let's get closer and then get him, Inari said with some impatience. Naruto stopped him and said, we get closer, but we wait until he is right about to die and then we strike. You take out the surrounding samurai. I free him and deliver a message to Gato, and then we get back. Fine, and with that they waited till Gato said his part. Let this be a lesson to all who oppose me, he will be an example to those who do, kill him, yelled Gato. The samurai then smirked and prepared to kill the guy, they were about to when a voice suddenly yelled out. Not on my watch to jackass, it was Naruto who yelled it as he as Inari jumped over the fence. Everyone was shocked to the core at this because it was two kids who jumped out of nowhere even more at how they were dressed. Naruto was dressed in black, steel-toed, combat boots, baggy black jeans with lots of pockets, a black muscle shirt, a black trench coat with the sleeves ripped off, a pair of sunglasses, and a black bandana that cover all of his hair, all that, topped with his huge glowing blade, he looked pretty intimidating. Inari had black shoes, black pants with silver T-shaped stripes on them, a blue shirt, a back jacket that showed of his shirt and a tan cloak that hid his face from them. That made every one of the samurai pause for a moment and that was all Inari needed as he pulled the water out of the air and knocked away all the samurai while Naruto cut Inari's stepdad down and looked right at Gato, it made the short man shiver a bit. Sleep in fear you creep, cause in time, you will be killed by the demon of the mist, that, or other ninja will kill your bitch ass. WHO the hell are you, Naruto smirked as he said, Taimu Kohaku he then turned to the older Inari and nodded to him. The boy understood and jumped next to him and he looked right at younger Inari and yelled out the just you before the three of them flashed out of existence. They appeared right in Tsunami's living room in another electrical surge, Naruto smirked before saying, mission accomplished, uh, that jutsu taken way to much chakra, then fell over and passed out with Inari's stepdad still in his arms, the man was in complete shock at what had happened. While that was happening, Tazuna and Tsunami were staring at them in shock as certain memories suddenly came to them and Tsunami screamed out, what the hell? Kaiza stared at the blonde boy, Inari had called him Naruto, reclining. Sleepily on the sofa next to him, Inari was seated in between them, fast. Asleep and curled against Kaiza's side, the poor kid had chattered on and on. While Tazuna was fixing up his wounds, excitedly explaining everything that, had happened after had died, though he was having trouble accepting that part. Remarkably the old bridge builder had been able to bandage him up pretty well. Though it took several long hours and a whole lot of screaming on Kaiza's part, and even more remarkably Naruto had managed to sleep through the whole process, now, about half a day later, here they sat on the sofa, Kaiza staring at Naruto, Naruto blearily looking up at the ceiling, and Inari passed out. Between them, as glad as Kaiza was to be alive and all, it was rather disconcerting to be. Suddenly tossed from one time to another, quite understandably he was having a bit of trouble adjusting, as if that wasn't hard enough, it was all because of this boy that his self-proclaimed son almost reverently referred to as his older brother, to think that this one child held the astonishing ability of time travel in his hands, I know I am awesome and all. Naruto grumped, startling him from his thoughts. But could you stop staring? You're sorta of freaking me out. 
Kaiza blinked at him before smiling a little sheepishly, sorry. The blonde nodded and mumbled a sleepy no problem, he yawned loudly. Showing of his just a little sharper than average teeth. Kaiza was silent for a few more moments, his eyes unconsciously drifting. Back to the lightly dozing teen, so, he said finally, if only to break the silence. What's it like to time travel? Naruto looked at him with half-lidded eyes and then grinned, it kinda tingles. Yes and it nearly drained you, said Tsunami as she came in and gave Kaiza a loving kiss, to which Inari up to and made a gagging sound, his mom just playfully bobbed him on his head. Right now though, Naruto was being a lazy ass, but he couldn't that way for long, now that his chakra was back to normal, he stood and said, Inari. Yeah? Stay here for a bit. Get to know you stepdad again, I am going back to see an old sage, he said cryptically. What, you're going to see that old man without me? Inari. I the time I am going back to is more dangerous than our time. Oh, wait, I think know what you are talking about, the time of bloodshed and all that, Kaiza said weakly, you sure you can handle? I don't know, but if I can't, I don't want Inari to be lost in the past. I see, well while you're going I am going to be training, I will not be weak when you get back, Inari declared as he ran out the door to train. I think he is taking after you, Naruto, old man Tazuna sighed out. Dad, that is a good thing, he just wants to protect the people he loves, just like Naruto, Tsunami said. Yeah, now I have to go, Naruto said, Tsunami nodded as she gave her serrate son a hug and then called out his jutsu and with a large electrical surge, he was gone. Kaiza just stared at the spot where he saw Naruto leave and sighed, I don't think I will ever get used to that, he deadpanned as Tazuna and Tsunami nodded at this, though they didn't know it, that electrical surge affected all of the elemental countries that just lead people to believe that something big was about to happen in the future, they didn't know how right they were. With Naruto, as Naruto flew in the air through the sea of time, as he called it, he noticed that the storm was getting worse the more he traveled back in time, he even had to split a few waves in half with his large blade so he would not get knocked off course and sent to another time. As he neared his destination, he waited for the lightning to strike him he could get access to the time he wanted, just as it was about to hit him, he saw a creature that sent chills down his spine, it was a humanoid creature that was surrounded in black mist like energy and had huge horns that were twisted into the infinity sign. When he was back in the normal world, he could feel the malice in the air, Hen then felt a terror and looked in the direction he came in, he was an old man in mortal combat with a man with a spiky white hair, which if possible was spikier than Jiraiya's. The old man was in white and gold high priest robes, had gold ninja like sandals, and a cracked in many places gold staff. The man had a white armored shirt, white baggy pants and white ninja sandals on. Naruto also saw a few other people there, but two stuck out the most. They were in priest-like robes on and Naruto recognized them at the two sons of the Sage of Six Paths. He walked up to them just as the fragile looking old mad speared the mad he was fighting through the chest, it seemed that the old man had won, but as he turned around, Naruto noticed it was not without a price, the old man's robes were shredded and bloodly with huge gashes here and there. It was then the old man noticed Naruto and said, I have been expecting you, Tama Kohaku or should I say, Naruto Uzumaki. It was then that all eyes were on him and he started to sweet, hey, you were expecting me? That is correct, Kailina told me of your presence before she left this world and told me you would be arriving soon, he said with a sad look on his face as he also noticed that that his two sons were in the same condition, though they were her sons, she treated them like they were, their real mother died long ago. I see but why was I told to come here by a large piece of her, Naruto said pointing to his rather large blade. It is because I have something I wish to give to you, you are Minot to save your time, and with that you will need the true Rinnegan. The old sage said as he placed his two figures on Naruto's forehead. Where his third eye would be, the boy feel power surge into his system. When it stopped he noticed the two sons of the sage were eye him and then smirked. With this new power, you will gain the powers of others, now, this power will let you control the bodies of fallen warriors and your mind controls them, you yourself may be able to use their power with enough training, take the body of my fallen apprentice, his bloodline shall be beneficial to you in the future, all you have to do is look him in the eyes, he said as he passed a scroll to Naruto and said to read in the future as it was a scroll on how the Rinnegan worked. Naruto nodded as he took the scroll and walked over to the dead body where he looked it in the eye and it disappeared, he would have asked where it went but he was sure he would find out when he read the scroll that and the sage of six paths was speaking again. Naruto, you have a long journey ahead of you, you must gain five other bodies. But ones that should be connected to you and your home and they can be from any time period. 
Once that is complete, find out your roots while searching for the temples of the elements from each major village of your time. There are five of them but some of them might not be accessible in your time, that is what time travel is for. Then both of the sons came over and handed Naruto a skull, the old man spoke for them, summoning scrolls that are lost to your time, use them and find the others, they will be need for you and your friends from your time. Naruto nodded and saw they were for white tigers and phoenixes, thank you but what am I supposed to do at these temples? Ah yes, you will find pieces of a key that will unlock the tower of time in your time. You will know where it is once you have found the pieces of the key. The power you find will unlock the true power of the blade of time that passes. The old man paused in thought and was about to ask his sons a question when it seemed that he remembered, sorry, old age and injuries are getting to me, you will need this as well, he said as he processed a dagger tail and dagger that was glowed blue, which was attached to the dagger tail, times serpent dagger. It was then the weapon snaked it why up Naruto's left arm and melted into it, forming a tattoo of it, cool, was Naruto's answer. Indeed it is, sage of time dubbed the old sage to a shocked Naruto as the old man patted him on the back and turned to his sons. Naruto watched firsthand the beings of the Senju and Uchiha clans as they were made. When the old was done, he was starting to look transparent. This is the end of me, but I have planted the seed of the future, then he dissolved into a gold mist that traveled to Naruto, giving him a godly look before the old man's chakra was infused with Naruto and his blade. The blade itself had changed just a bit, the blue energy was still there but now, Right next to it was a line of gold energy and the same with the aninity sign and the other odd symbols on it, only for it was mixed energies. Naruto sighed and turned to the two brothers and said, I guess it's time for me to go, they just nodded and he did the jutsu and left, unknown to him, the two brother would start his legend, the legend of the sage of time and boy will he and his friends be surprised when he returns. Sea of time, Naruto was flying through the sea of time once again, but he had not set destination, he was thinking on whose bodies he should use. He has think on his past and the past of other when an idea struck. Well a few ideas, sure some people in Konoha will be shocked but they probably need it, he quickly flew off and was stuck by the time lightning, he arrived at the end of the battle between Gara and Lee versus, Kimiuru, SP? The bone guy, he walked up to the body stuck up in the bone forest and looked into its eyes and it was gone and so was he, if he would have stay a few second more, Gara would have seen him and he looked back to see that the dead body of the boy freak was gone. Another flash later and pile of dirt that was flung up to reveal Haku. He took her body and flashed out, a flash later and he was in Kumo. Right as they were about the body of one Hizashi Hayuga. He took the body right out the shocked ninja's hands and got the hell of out there before he they had time to react. The last two people he went in time for was Obito Uchiha's body. Which he had to remove a lot of rocks to get in Nawaki Senju. That last one has been a real pain because he had to sneak into the death room while a frantic and younger Tsunade and a younger Jiraiya were talking at the entrance, they saw him near the kid and noticed the kid was gone, that made them furious and they demand his name before they killed him, he had said Tama Kohaku and flashed out of there, leaving two gobsmacked future sage in his wake. Naruto had to make one last stop and leave a message to his old friend Gara, but he wouldn't be doing it the normal way. Here I come Gaara yelled naruto as he traveled to the day before gara went nuts in flash he was in the village of sand a few feet from the main gates tch now to find him unknown to him the chunin guard saw the flash and gawked since he was drinking he threw the bottle away and continued to stare what is the famed time sage doing here he asked himself before he quickly turned around to stare the desert he wanted no part in this even if the guy helped them out in the past as naruto walked through the desert city he came upon the sight of a younger Tamari, she looked to be seven years old, which meant that Gara was five years old in this time period, so he continued to walk, but it seemed that she noticed him and walked right up to him, hey, who are you? I have never seen you around here before, she demanded with her hands on her hips. Oh, just a traveler passing through, I have never been here and I am kind of lost, quipped Naruto with a smirk. Well, I am Tamari of the desert, the case cage's daughter, if you wanted a tour around this place, you should have asked, when gave no noticeable reaction to her being the daughter of a cage she asked, don't you care that I am the daughter of a cage? Naruto chuckled and said, nope, I see it or care, this made her red with anger until Naruto spoke again, what I do see is a beautiful young lady with a lot of potential. Wah, wow. how can you see that, little Tamari with a blush? Your eyes tell all, I can see that you have suffered a bit, but you are trying to prove to everyone that you are strong, that is what I see, besides, I have met you before and I can say that you will become one of the wind mistresses ever. I wish my eyes would shut up, she grumbled, 
but then heard the other parts and her eyes widened. She was about to ask how he knew that but then she took a look as clothes, black combat boots, black baggy pants with lots of pockets, a black muscle shirt, a black trench coat with the sleeves ripped off, a black bandana on his head that covered his hair, a pair of black sunglasses, and the huge blade on his back. Instant recognition was in her eyes and they grew to size of dinner plates, the only man she looked up to. Your, your, your Tama Kohaku. He suddenly yelled as she suddenly glomped him. As he fell, he could only chuckle. This Tamari was a lot more hyper than the one he knew in his time, yep, he said as he got up with her in his arms. The villagers just chuckled at the scene, as they had recognized him already and got over the shock of seeing one of their old heroes that fought with the third case cage against an old enemy, they did admit that he looked younger than what he was before, so how do you know me? He asked. How can I not know you? Tamari gushed, you are in the history books, I read a book with my dad a few years ago on how you helped the third case cage out in a battle and he helped you get into the Temple of Wind for your help you're my only hero. Naruto's sweat dropped as he took it all in, I guess I become quite a hero here, wait, she said the third case cage? That has to me well into the past, I wonder if I have to do stuff like that to get to these temples. Well, since I haven't been here in a long time, will you show me around here, Tamari-chan? He'll be happy to, she said as she jumped out of his arms and started pulling his arms, come on, Naruto chuckled as he Tamari roughly pulled him throughout the village, during that time, he learned quite a lot and the two just chatted about random topics until they came upon the village playground and she asked a question that was bugging her. Kohaku-san, could you tell me what I am like in the future? She asked with puppy dog eyes, to which Naruto caved in on. All right, but first just call me Tama, I really don't like formalities, now I know I should NT but I guess I can tell you, I met you in my chunin exams in Konoha, I must say, you are a bad ass Kinoichi, you were pretty much a wind mistress by then. She wanted to know what she looked like and before she could ask, she was cut off by a scream and she grimaced because she knew what it was about and she was also worried about her little brother, Gara. she said as she ran off with Naruto following her. What they saw was a scared Gara who was looking at sand that was dragging some kids to him, Naruto sighed and walked forward, but Tamari caught him and looked at him with concerned eyes, he just smiled and said, don't worry Tamari-chan, I won't get hurt and neither will your little brother, she gave him another concerned look before she let him go. Naruto walked over to the chaos and just touched the ropes that were pulling the kids, it froze up and then fell into the surrounding sand and everyone had shocked looks on their faces, the kids just yelled thanks mister. As they ran away, Gara just looked at Naruto as he walked over to him and said, the voice, it is gone. Who are you? Naruto smiled to the young redhead, just like Tamari, he was different when he was younger as well, Tama Kohaku, don't worry Gara. Shukaku will leave you alone a little while. Gara and Tamari's eyes widen after they heard that, after that, the three just got to know each other a little better, with the siblings getting a bit closer, after a while they were sitting on top of a nearby building. Tama, thanks for calming Shukaku, but why did you do it? asked Gara. Because, like Tamari-chan, I have met you before, but under different circumstances, Naruto said with a sad smile. What do you mean Tama? asked Tamari, I meet your team when I take my chunin exams in Konoha. You. Gara and Konkuro, you are all different in that time. Konkuro is a bit of a perverted jerk. Tamari, you are a bit of a cold but badass ninja who commands the wind, and you, Gara, are a heartless killer. The two kids looked at him with wide eyes and look a little scared. Gara, I have come in time to give you a message, because I am from that time and people think I am dead because I got my time powers. Now that I am here, I want to give you some advice. When you lose sight of yourself in the future, seek out the one called Naruto Uzumaki at the Chunin exams your answer to your existence will be with him. Gara had a confused look on his face before he asked, okay, but who is he to you? Naruto chuckled again and said, because, in way, he is me. The two young kids' eyes widened at that information, cool, was the combined reply. Now, I want you to remember this as well, because this is the message I want you to remember. I am still alive, but don't tell Konoha I am, that is because I will be back. When the time is right, Naruto then looked to the kids and they nodded, he then stood up and took off his sunglasses so they could see them, they were the deepest shade of blue they ever saw and Tamari caught herself staring and blushed a bit as she looked away, Naruto smiled as ruffled their hair as he put on his glasses back on, the same eyes as mine, remember that, okay, I gotta go now, remember me okay, they nodded as did the jutsu and flashed away. Seiya then, Naruto ni chan whispered Gara into the night, Tamari didn't say anything as she was thinking some other thoughts. With Gara and Tamari, Sand Village, normal time period.
Gara and Konkuro had just finished talking about how Naruto had shown him the way to be a real hero and such, as Tamari walked up to him, the three looked out in the sunset as Tamari had an arm around her little brother's shoulder, there was an odd flash in the sunset and the two siblings suddenly remember something very important. Gara, what he said was true, Tamari suddenly said as she remembered that night with a small blush. Yeah, the two really were the same person, and he is not dead, I also have a strange feeling that he will be coming here soon. Why? asked Tamari a little panicked and Gara just looked at her, oh, that's right, he doesn't know what year to go to, that would be hard to figure out all by himself. That and the temple of wind is all but rubble in this time, Gara said, with that said, the two siblings went back into town, to prepare. That left a very confused Konkuro in their wake before he yelled out, who the hell are you two talking about? Naruto Uzumaki aka Tama Kohaku was the answer he got from a blushing Tamari. Konkuro's eyes widened to the size of dinner plates as he said, holy shit, he recovered quickly at the sit of his sister blushed and got an evil smirk on his face, so what is with the blush Tamari? Shush shut up, Naruto, in the sea of time, well, that was a good time, who know they were so different as kids, he said as the storm suddenly got worse, what the? He had to split the waves a few times before a lightning bolt from far away snaked its way over to him and in a flash, he was gone. When Naruto was five, Naruto flashed in a random ally in Konoha, he slowly walked out and saw the Kayubi festival, sure he was confused, but he just couldn't figure out why he was here, okay, the hell is going on, I was aiming for the time I left, sighing, he just continued walking through the festival. That is when he saw himself, he saw his five-year-old self and gasped, this is the year that I got it real bad, hey, maybe I can change it for the better, he said as he followed his younger self in the crowd, he noticed, the stares that were directed at his younger self were worse than normal, oh yeah, I am changing this day somehow, he didn't notice until it was to later that they had wandered into a stadium, oh right, the talent show, he he he. Suddenly a man in a black suit walked out from the curtains and yelled, okay, it is now time for someone from the audience to come up and sing three songs, so who has the balls. Naruto smirked and yelled, Oi, he'll do it, before anyone else could. Then come on up my black clad friend. The yelled as Naruto made his way up to the stage, when he got there the guy said, Okay dude, this is your time, so you make the rules. To this Naruto just smirked, he took the mic and yelled out, Was up party people? The crowd roared at that, I am going to do things differently this year. I am going to choose a few people to come up and do whatever while I sing. The crowd cheered and Naruto said okay, this first song is called, burn it to the ground, so I would like, he randomly pointed out two people from the audience, which turned out to a younger Anko and Kurinai. He just smiled as they came up without fear and said, you ladies ready to rock? Hell yeah cutie, purred Anko as he she got right in his face. This should be interesting, said Kurinai, well, let's get this party started then. Naruto said as he pumped his fist in the air and Anko cheered while Kurinai smiled at her best friend's antics. As the music began to play, courtesy of his shadow clones in the back, he then tapped his foot a few time before starting as the two girls began to dance. Burn it to the ground, Nickelback, well it's midnight, damn right. We're wound up too tight I got a fist full of whiskey, the bottle just bit me. Ooh that shit makes me bad shit crazy we got not fear no doubt all in balls out. As Naruto sung his lightning-like powers sparked up above them and started showing scenes of the timeline, the first was Anko fighting Orochimaru in the forest of death, the thing was, neither one of the three on stage knew it was there and when the third Hokage saw it, he went wide-eyed as he knew who this guy was. We're going out tonight, hey, to kick out every light, hey. Take anything we want, hey, take everything in sight, hey. We're going till the world stops turning while we burn it to the ground at night. Each time he said the word hey, the crown said hey and the lightning surged a bit. We're screaming like demons swinging from the ceiling. I got a fistful of fifties tequila just hit me ooh. We got no class, no taste no shirt and shit faced we got them lined up. Shot down firing back straight crown the scene changed to that of Anko, always crashing through windows, then leading a team back to Mother Island. We're going out tonight, hey, to kick out every light, hey. Take anything we want. Hey, take everything in sight, hey. We're going till the world stops turning while we burn it to the ground at night. Then it changed to the first time Anko and Kurinai became friends while on a mission together. Tickin' like a time bomb drink until the night's gone.
Get your hands off of this glass last call my ass no chain no lock and this train won't stop. We got no fear no doubt all in balls out it then changed to Kuranai and Asuma going out, this caught the Sarutobi's attention and made him blush, he would wait time later to date her. We're going out tonight, hey, to kick out every light, hey. Take anything we want, hey, take everything in sight, hey. We're going till the world stops turning while we burn it to the ground at night. It then changed to the last scene with Anko, Kuranai, and a baby is Kuranai's arms with Asuma next to them. We're going out tonight, hey, to kick out every light, hey. Take anything we want, hey, take everything in sight, hey. We're going till the world stops turning while we burn it to the ground at night. When the song ended, people at first just stared the before breaking out in a loud cheer, so with that Naruto led the two young ladies off the stage, and when they were off, Anko gave him a quick peck on the cheek before running off with her best friend, so Naruto just rubbed it a bit and shuddered as he remembered how crazy she was in the future. H. Ethan walked back up and pointed to a few other people and they turned out to be Sakura, Ino, Uruka, and Sasuke. He just shook his head at his luck and called out his next song. New Divide Lincoln Parle, I remember black skies, the lightning all around me. I remembered each flash as time began to blur like a startling sign that fate had finally found me. And your voice was all I heard, that I get what I deserve. The lightning show was back again as it showed them in the academy. So give me reason to prove me wrong, to wash this memory clean. Let the floods cross the distance in your eyes give me reason to fill this hole, connect the space between. Let it fill up to reach the truth and lies, across this new divide. It showed Eno defending Sakura from a bully, there was nothing in sight, the memories left abandoned. There was nowhere to hide, the ashes fell like snow. And the ground caved in between where we were standing. And your voice was all I heard, that I get what I deserve. The scene changed to Sasuke and Itachi talking in their home and then it changed to Sasuke spying on his brother's throwing practice. So give me reason to prove me wrong, to wash this memory clean. Let the floods cross the distance in your eyes, across this new divide. In every loss, in every lie, in every truth that you deny. And each regret and each goodbye were some mistakes you pray to hide. And your voice was all I heard, that I get what I deserve. It then changed to Sasuke surround by Ino and Sakura in the academy fighting over Sasuke with Uruka trying to separate them for the first time. So give me reason to prove me wrong, to wash this memory clean. Let the floods cross the distance in your eyes give me reason to fill this hole, connect the space between. Let it fill up to reach the truth and lies, across this new divide. Across this new divide across this new divide when the song and the dancing kids stopped, the crowd burst into a loud cheer once more as the some of the kids were left of stage, Sasuke and Uruka were told to stay behind as Naruto pointed to his younger self and a younger Kakashi, it was a good thing that he was wearing sunglasses or he would not be here at the moment, alright kid, ready for you song to be sung? His self just looked at him like he was crazy, he just chuckled and began to sing once more. Monster skillet. The secret side of me. I never let you see. I keep it caged but I can't control it so stay away from me, the beast is ugly. I feel the rage and I just can't hold it the lighten then showed Naruto and Sasuke when they are older, but Naruto had a background of red chakra to him while Sasuke had a purple chakra background. It's scratching on the walls, in the closet, in the halls. It comes awake and I can't control it hiding under the bed, in my body, in my head. Why won't somebody come and save me from this, make it end? The scene changed to Sasuke brutally beating up the sound ninja in the forest of death. I feel it deep within, it's just beneath the skin I must confess that I feel like a monster. I hate what I've become, the nightmare's just begun I must confess that I feel like a monster. It was then of Naruto when he was training with Jiraiya as he pushed him of the cliff and Naruto had to demand the fox for its chakra. I, I feel like a monster I, I feel like a monster my secret side I keep hid under lock and key. I keep it caged but I can't control it cause if I let him out hell tear me up, break me down. Why won't somebody come and save me from this, make it end? It showed Naruto figting the Shukaku, I feel it deep within, it's just beneath the skin. I must confess that I feel like a monster I hate what I've become, the nightmare's just begun. I must confess that I feel like a monster I feel it deep within, it's just beneath the skin. I must confess that I feel like a monster I, I feel like a monster. I, I feel like a monster it's hiding in the dark, its teeth are razor sharp. 
The scene changed to a lighter note with Iruka with Sasuke and Naruto in the academy, and then Naruto with Iruka during the Mizuki incident. There's no escape for me, it wants my soul, it wants my heart. No one can hear me scream, maybe it's just a dream maybe it's inside of me, stop this monster. The scene was then of Team 7 and their ventures, I feel it deep within, it's just beneath the skin. I must confess that I feel like a monster I hate what I've become, the nightmare's just begun. I must confess that I feel like a monster the final scene was of Naruto and Sasuke in the valley of the end. I feel it deep within, it's just beneath the skin I must confess that I feel like a monster. I've gotta lose control, he's something radical I must confess that I feel like a monster. I, I feel like a monster I, I feel like a monster I, I feel like a monster. I, I feel like a monster when it was all said and done, everyone was quiet as the third Hokage walked up to the stage and said, Tama Kohaku, please come with me, he nodded as the flashed out of there, we they were gone, everyone was staring at little Naruto and then left, they thought if they hurt him physically, they would feel the wrath of time on them. Once in the Hokage's office, they talked a bit with the old man telling Naruto what he saw, so Tama, why are you here? Naruto chuckled and just took off his bandana and sunglasses and said, cuz old man, I wanted to see my younger self not get hurt. The old man just stared at Naruto's whiskerless face and said, I, he was cut off by Naruto hugging him. It is good to see you again, what do you mean? Naruto sighed, apart from those images you saw, I am about to reveal other thing, his face then grew serious, you die at my chunin exams by sealing Orochimaru's arms to the Shinigami, that is what Jiraiya told me anyway. I see, the old Hokage would have said more if he hadn't been interrupted by the entrance of an old, one-armed man. Naruto heard the Hokage growl out Danzo and he became instantly alert. I heard that the famed Tama Kohaku was here, but you look like a younger version of the fourth Hokage to me. You're close, I am Naruto Uzumaki, ah the brat, but I am very confused as to why a whelp like you could become such an important figure in history, I guess it won't matter, you can work for me now. Danzo said with a smug look on his face until Naruto got up and slammed him against the wall. Shut up you old fuck. I bet you heard about me from those annoying ass root ninja you command. He then remembered his mom's words form the letter and his anger rose. You. You're the fucking reason I don't have a mom, you killed her. Hey, no proof, but I guess it is a good thing. No family ties to make a great ninja under my command, said Danzo. I said shut up. I should kill you myself, Naruto yelled, but then smirked giving the one-eyes man the creeps, no, I won't kill you, he'll let someone else do that, he then walked to the door. Naruto, who are you going to get? asked a concerned Sarutobi. The boy just smirked and said, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, and I have all the time in the world to go a get her, the Hokage, Danzo, and even the hidden Anbu all paled. Danzo, you're screwed, the old man said as all that came out of Danzo's mouth was hot air. Oh an old man, Naruto said at the door, as got the attention of the Hokage, I tell you one more this, I learned this during my training, if you want to get done with the evil paperwork, use shadow clones, they retain the info they get and send it back to the creator, with that Naruto closed the door and flashed away. There was silence in the office before the Hokage started laughing like a mad loon, Danzo quickly left the room while the hidden Anbu just shook his head. Naruto time warped right in the living room of Inari's home a few days after he left there. Hey guys, how is it going? After the initial shock of Naruto just appearing out of nowhere, Kaiza spoke, Oh, not much Naruto, you have fun in the past or whenever you went. You could say that, Naruto smirked, I gave a message to an old friend and then I put on rock concert. That is nice, Inari should be getting in soon, so why don't you help me set the table so we could all have dinner, said Tsunami with a smile. Naruto nodded and began to help and after 10 minutes, Inari came in and smiled at his brother figure, that didn't take long bro. I never said it would, now we can talk about some more training. What do you mean bro? We should finish this year off with more training, you know, to be ready for anything we might eventually come across in our travels. Fine with me, I wanna be the best water master out there, Inari said as his mom left the dinner table for a minute and came back with an old looking scroll. Inari, if you are going to be traveling around the world like you said, please take this scroll. As Inari took it, he asked mom, thanks, but what is it? It is from your father, he wanted me to give it to you, it contains jutsu and the summoning contract for alligators and crocodiles. Thanks mom, yelled Inari as he hugged his mom while Naruto smiled. So for the next eight months, Naruto and Inari trained themselves into the ground, 
Naruto had created a few jutsu of his own and they were pretty strong, one of them though was a joint attack with their water powers and even Inari paled at how much damage it did, though, Tsunami got real pissed for destroying one of her flower gardens and no one wanted to be around her when she was angry. Anyway, it was a good thing that Naruto learned how to waterbend a bit or that attack would have been impossible to do. He had bought chakra paper before coming back and he had found that they both had the same chakra elements, water, wind, and lightning, though Inari's water element was the strongest while Naruto's was wind, after that he snuck into other town once in a while to get jutsu for their elements and Naruto learned that sealing was very interesting along with making a few of his own jutsu, heck he even improved his Rasengan to new lengths and even added elements to it. He remembered the scroll the old sage gave to him and opened it to work on the Rinnegan. He found out that if you have a bloodline in the bodies you possess, it brings out the full potential of that bloodline, that was good because, it took away the blind spot in the Byakugan, along with the caged bird seal and brought Obito's Sharingan to eternal level, and without all the negative side effects, he also discovered, from the toads, sage mode, he got into it once but that was way too much power and he hasn't been able to get into it since, he does have a few ideas though. Inari had pretty much become quite the water boy, and in a good way, he bent the water in such a way where he could convert it to ice, vapor, steam, and mist, he even got his summons to accept him. He even got himself a bow staff and incorporated it into his water bending style. Finally the day had come where they could finally set off on their journey, Tsunami was fussing over the two of them as they walked to the bridge, where everyone from the village was waiting to see them off. It was Tazuna who spoke for the village, you know, I know you two would have to leave someday and so we all began making preparations for this day, though I thought it would have been much much later, eh, what can you do, here, it is money for the trip, the old bridge builder said with a smile on his old face as he gave the two a generous amount of money. Naruto looked at it in shock and said, are you sure, it is a lot of money. Don't worry about it, you're going to need it, Tazuna replied. Uh, okay, thank you, the blonde said, not really sure what else to say. Naruto gave Tsunami, Kaiza, and Tazuna a hug as they wished him luck, Inari did as well but he did cry a bit and said, don't worry mom, I be okay, I am going out in the world to make you proud. Tsunami just giggled a bit and hugged him tighter, saying, you already have, that brought a smile both boys faces as they walked the bridge to their journey. When they were a good distance away from the village, Tsunami said, they're going to be great warriors one day. Kaiza looked at her and said, they already have, what do you mean? asked Tazuna. I checked out a recent history book in the library and saw them in it, Kaiza went on about how the boys helped Kumo, Kiri, Suna, and were seen in Iwa in the past, he smirked at their shocked looks, they're in for a hell of a ride. With Naruto and Inari, so, where to first bro, asked Inari. Naruto put on a prankster smirk and said, the borders of Konoha, time to leave with them a little message and then to the capital city in fire country, we have to pay the fire lord a little visit. Inari's smirk just grew with each step they took to Konoha as Naruto told him about his plan, it was a good message and all and people were going to people they thought were dead. Konoha, three days later, not much had changed in the year that Naruto had disappeared. Well, Sasuke did because he had gotten the curse seal off thanks to Jiraiya. When that happened, he couldn't remember anything from the forest of death or beyond. Though he somehow remembered all the jutsu he had learned. He also found that he had gained the power of the Mangekio Sharingan. But at a price, once he activated it, his body would morph to that of his curse seal level 2 from. Which is why he barely ever used it, his personality had changed a bit as well because when he heard that it was he who made Naruto disappear, he worked day and night in his training to one day be able to go find his friend and bring him back to the village, him along with the rest of the rookie 11 since they all thought they was not dead. Tsunade didn't have the heart to tell them they were wrong because a part of her thought he really was alive. Sakura had become Tsunade's apprentice and was advancing in the medical fields quite well along with Ino and Hinata. The others had just throw themselves into training like the Uchiha had so that they could help find their friend. Right now though everyone was taking a break from training and was just hanging out, Sasuke, Sakura, and Team 10 were lounging about in random train field, along with the Konohamaru Corps, Neji, Hinata, and her team with eating at the Hyuga estate. Lee and Tenten were sparing at their training ground, Kakashi was with the other Jonin sensei where at the memorial and they were trying to get him away from it and Jiraiya was annoying Tsunade and Shizune in the Hokage tower. Naruto and Inari appeared on the Hokage monument, cloaked by Inari's genjutsu, Naruto had his pads out while Inari was casting a genjutsu on them to make them look like their old selves since they all had white hair, I wonder what they will do when they see them. Who knows bro, 
I am more worried about how they will take the message, will they understand it? I am sure they will, they are all smart after all. Okay bro, your paths are ready, good Naruto said as he nodded to his ourselves and they disappeared to deliver their messages, Inari, get ready to leave soon, I am sure someone will notice the genjutsu. Yeah, yeah, you'll just azure flash us out of here, I got it. In the Hokage Tower, Tsunade was desperately trying to ignore her old teammate, would not shut up, when he did get quiet, she looked up at him and followed his paled gaze, what she saw made her pale as well because in front of them was little Nawaki, staring at them. With Sasuke and the others, Sakura was talking to Ino about random things, Sasuke was lounging with the two lazy asses, and the Konohamaru Kor, were playing a game of ninja when they all felt a presence in the area, they all turned to the source and the two members of Team 7 gasped as they say the figure of Haku, as the day they met him, mask and all. With Hinata and the others, Hinata was talking with Neji about her trawling with Tsunade while her two teammate and sister just listened on. Hiyashi, who had just came in was listening as well and he was very proud of her, then a man appeared in the courtyard where they were at, Hiyashi and Neji were ready to attack but when they got a better look at the intruder, they both fell to their knees while Hinata and her team just had their mouths open in a shock while Hanabi was just confused, there, standing in front of them was none other than Hizashi himself. With Lee and Tenten, the two were currently in a heated taijutsu match when they felt a presence behind them. Lee was the first to recognize the white-haired man as Kimimaru, the man he and Gara though was dead, hanging in a forest made from his bones. With Kakashi and the other John and Sensei, along with Anko, Guy was ranting on about the power of youth as usually while Kuranai was trying to keep Anko from killing the green maniac. While Asuma just shot his head, they come to try and cheer up Kakashi who was now 4 hours late to everything and they wanted him to get back to normal since he looked so broken most of the time, Kakashi turned around to tell them to leave him be when his single visible eye widened in shock, the others who were about to respond to his wave off, looked in the same direction as he did and paled, because a few feet away from them was Obito Uchiha, Kakashi's old teammate and friend. When where he stood, Naruto smirked as he saw everyone's reactions through the eyes of each of his paths, he chose not to use his metal path because no one would recognize him, he then spoke through each of his paths with the same message at the same time. Though we may be dead, we live on through another you all hold dear, when the tower of time rises, be ready for the return of the sage of time and an old friend you all have lost and think is dead, for when he returns, the five elements will unite to fight a great evil that will be unleashed, be ready my old friends. With that Naruto made his paths return to his mind. But with style, Kimimaru's body turned as white as bone and disintegrated into the wind. Obito's body was surrounded in fire before the wind blew it and him out of sight. Haku's body turned to ice before the sun's intense rays melted it into water. Hizashi's body turned to white leaves that flew away into the wind and Nawaka's body turned to sawdust that flew out the window. Tusnade and Jiraiya both went to the window to see the sawdust fly out towards the Hokage monument. That is when a genjutsu released and they had saw a sight they had not seen in many years, the time sage himself, with a brown cloaked figure as they azure flashed away. What the hell? said Tsunade as everyone else had the same phrase going through their minds. Four days later, in the capital city, Naruto and Inari had just arrived at the Fire Lord's palace and everyone they passed seemed to be recognizing them as a lot of people were bowing to them. Hey bro, yeah Inari. Are people bowing to us because of what we are going to be doing in the past? Most likely, ah, Inari said as Hei approached the main gates of the Fire Lord's palace. The guard rose an eyebrow at them before his eyes widened when he recognized them and lead them through. They walked through the gorgeous halls until they came upon a set of huge white doors. Please wait here while I announce you presents, young sages. With that, guard disappeared by the huge doors. He said sages with an S right? Asked a bug-eyed Inari. That is what I heard anyway, Naruto said with a bit of a smirk. As soon as he said that, the large door opened to reveal a room that would belong to a Greek king. There were golden pillars on the sides of the room with white statues lining the red carpet that lead to three marble thrones, where a few people were sitting in, the floor too was white marble. In the middle of the thrones was the largest that held a maw with a large white beard, regal looking red clothes, and a clown atop his white hair, to his right was obviously his wife, she too wore regal red clothes, she had graying red hair, and she looked to be the same age as her husband, now to the mons left was a young, red-headed girl, about the age of thirteen in a beautiful red dress with fiery designs on it, she was looking at the two boys with a critical eye. Probably thinking either one could be a good future husband. It was the old fire lord who spoke with a straight face, I have been waiting for you sage of time, reptile sage, the man said to the two boys, 
Inari now understood why he was called a sage before. The old man then put on a smile on his face and said, It really has been too long, young Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto was taken aback at how the old Fire Lord could know him and then it hit him like a train in snow country, he had come to visit when the third Hokage took him here when he was six years old for the Fire Lord had summoned the old man for some reason, when Naruto had come with him, the Fire Lord was surprised but not mad, even he could tell Naruto was himself and not the demon, you scared me for a minute there, Tashisama, he said as he took off his black bandana and sunglasses. As soon as the Fire Lord's daughter saw this, she quickly jumped out of her seat and ran to glomp Naruto. Naruto ni chan. The Fire Lord and his wife just chuckled at this while Inari was just confused. Naruto chuckled as his first and oldest friend glomped him. As he got up, he helped her up, saying, Nice to see you too, Kira chan. You miss me? Are you kidding? Of course I do. You never write. How am I supposed to know if my best friend is still alive or not? Oh, and what is this? I hear that you are the most famous person in history. You blockhead. She said, surprised, then scolded at the end. I am not aware of my fame at the moment. Naruto said as he sweat dropped at the hot headed red head. Uh, did I miss something? came the sudden voice of Inari. Hey, old man Hokage took me here when I was six, I quickly became friends with everyone here. Oh, so you got connections with people in high places, Inari stated more than asked with a smirk. You could say that young reptile sage, now Naruto, why are you here and not in Konoha? the old fire lord asked. You of all people should know that, after all, you called me the sage of time, Naruto said as the old man raised an eyebrow. Though my accomplishments have been stated in those history books everyone has been talking about, I have not done those things yet for our journey has only begun. Understanding flashed across the old man's face as he said, I see, you are from this time after all, but you have not answered my other question yet, and why you are here. Naruto sighed and said, Konoha might think that I am dead but not for long. You see, last year I was in a battle against an Orochimaru-possessed Sasuke Uchiha. We got separated and found out about my true call which you all know of, I will return to Konoha in one year to unite the five elemental countries to fight the being known as the dark entity that has been sealed in the timeline for thousands of years. Naruto paused to let the info sink in, now, why I am here is part of my journey, he said as he pulled out a golden horseshoe from a seal in his coat, I need to get into the Greek memorial and the temple of fire. Ah. The golden omega symbol of ancient Greece, right, I grant you permission to enter them, just go to the Greek memorial first, trust me you will need to power you receive from there on your travels, the fire lord said as he tossed Naruto a small flame like key that went to the temple of fire, oh and Naruto. Yatashi Sama, do this old man a favor and be careful, I know more about you than you know, he said cryptically. Right, old man, Naruto said with a smirk as the two boys left to go to the Greek memorial on the far side of the city. Tashi's wife, Kuina, looked at her husband and said, he has not changed much. Yes and that is what scares me, even though I know a lot about him from the history books and see him and a second son ever since he came on his first visit, I still worry he might mess something up and fail in his quest. Dad, you worry too much, besides, he will be the strongest person in history, maybe I could be with him in the end, she said with a sly smirk. The old man smirked sadly and said, you of all people should know that is impossible. You have read everything there is to know about the Sage of Time. The girl sighed and said, Yeah, I know, that woman from Kiri is lucky, she whined. Kuina smiled and said, Well, there is always the reptile sage. The girl looked at her mom and thought about it, perhaps, if he already does have a girl by the time he returns, she said as she looked towards the door. Naruto and Inari were now on the other side of the city and panting, Why? Well, they wanted to race there, and since they didn't know where it really was, they got lost a few times. I, win, Naruto, panted Inari, you, just got, lucky, said Naruto. Yeah, don't be a sore loser, smirked Inari, yeah yeah, Naruto responded as they walked into the building that looked like an ancient Greek temple. So where are we supposed to put that horseshoe thing? Sskd Inari until they came upon a statue of an old man in a toga, a nearby sign said it was Zeus, as their eyes traveled up the statue they saw a grove that looked like the horseshoe in the old man's chest. Place the omega symbol in the heart of the king of Olympus and the path to their resting place shall be lit up, Naruto read, he then looked up and said, that answers your question. Yes thank you, Mr. points out the obvious, Inari said sarcastically, so, do you want to jump up there or would you like for me to raise you up to it with my ice pillar? Let's go with your ice pillar, I don't feel like jumping. Right, the water master said as he pulled the water out of the air, 
formed it into a spiraling pillar, and then froze it, with that, Naruto walked up the pillar and slammed the Omega symbol in its rightful spot. The statue began to move its arms toward the ice, Inari saw this and quickly got out of the way, just as huge bolts of lightning shot through the ice, shattering it in the ground where Inari once stood, that opened up a stairway that went downward. Naruto landed next to Inari and the little boy couldn't help but snicker at the blonde, ice was sticking to the blonde's clothes and his hair was standing on end, well, I guess we know what lit up means now, Naruto said venomously as he put his black bandana back on. Hey, yeah, Inari chuckled as they descended down the stairs, they were unaware of the sign changing its wording, now the must face challenges of the big three to win the power of the destroyer of the gods. As the duo got to the bottom of the stairs, they entered a room that looked very spacious and very plain with torches lining the sides of it, they also noticed a sign in the middle of the room, first challenge, army of Hades, Naruto read before it disappeared and the room shook a bit, why'd I have a bad feeling about this? Well, no said this would be a cakewalk, Inari stated as he got ready to fight, wait a sec, isn't this Hades guy the god of the underworld? Oh great, we are getting challenged by the old Shinigami, Naruto replied sarcastically, then, by those words, the ground cracked and hands shot out, those hands were connected to undead looking Roman soldiers and sailors, ah, shit, zombies. Well, we might as well kill them again so that they stay down, Inari said with a nervous chuckle, he then began to flash through a few hand signs before yelling, steam claws jutsu. Inari's hand were covered in chakra before the natural water in the air surrounded his hands and then boiled so hot it turned to steam. Naruto smirked before summoning his metal realm, he set him out to attack, the path brought metal from nowhere and it impaled and sliced up their enemies alongside Inari who was tearing up all the zombies that attacked, after a bit, there were at least 50 zombies still there, so Inari jumped back to Naruto as his metal realm disappeared. Got a jutsu that will get rid of these freaks fast, asked an annoyed Inari at how these thing just came back for more. 1. Stay behind me, Naruto stated as he Inari moved, Naruto did a few of his own hand signs before pointing his right palm right that horde of zombies, wind vortex jutsu. A small pocket of condensed air formed a few centimeters from his hand as it sucked in all the zombies, but before they could cheer at their success, a few undead, axe and hammer wielding, minotaurs appeared. Naruto smirked and yelled out his next jutsu, wind vortex cannon jutsu. What came out was not what he expected, all that came out was high pressure wind that knocked down the minotaurs, that in a black mist. Note to self, never use on zombies, he said as both Inari and him sweat dropped, forget this, Inari, just bend. Naruto yelled as he charged in and started basting a few minotaurs with while also turning some of the wind into blades and sliced them to pieces. Inari used the water to block the attacks of their axe swings until he saw an opening, he took it and sharpened the water into spears, but it seemed that it didn't kill his half, so he surrounded them in water and froze them, he smirked as he formed some water blades and broke the iced minotaurs to pieces. Well, that was different, Inari commented, yeah, but why do I get the feeling that it is not over, asked Naruto, just then, two huge cyclops climbed out of the holes in the ground. Ah come on Naruto, you just had to jinx it, yelled Inari. He then did some hand signs for one of his lightning jutsu. Zapper jutsu he began to circle the two cyclops at high speeds thanks to the ice he formed on the ground. While shooting quick shots of lightning bolts the two freaks. It only seemed to irritate them as they growled out and punched the ground, which threw Inari off balance, dang, I hope that would work, he said as he got back up only for Naruto to charge in with his time serpent dagger and the blade of time at the ready, he sent the dagger to the ceiling, to which it stuck and Naruto swung over to one of the cyclops and tried a downward slice, it was stopped by both of its hands, to which Naruto growled it until he got an idea. Naruto sent chakra through his dagger tail and he made it snake its way into the thing's eye. Naruto smirked and brought down the blade one more time to see it slice right down the middle, while it was busy roaring about its eye, with that one dead, the other one got pissed and punched Naruto into the wall next to Inari, ah, uh, this not working. Well, we could try that joint jutsu on it, Inari suggested as he helped Naruto out of the wall. Alright, that should have enough power to kill this thing, Naruto said as they did the hand signs simultaneously then they put their hands forward like they were throwing energy, after that, Naruto got behind Inari to form the same position Goku and Gohan used to kill Cell. A water vortex in the shape of a sphere formed a few inches in front of them, the two boys smirked and yelled out, Uzumaki cannon. With that, the sphere formed a high speed blast of water that shredded the stupid creature. Once it was gone, the holes on the ground sealed up and a door formed at the other end of the room, the room also glowed a bit and the two boys felt energies once again, 
Okay. At least we won't have to keep on fighting like we are drained of all energy, Inari stated. Naruto nodded as they exited that room and enter a completely different room, it seemed that they were now on a huge Greek ship in the middle of an ocean, oh, k. Inari would have said something, but he was cut off by an unearthly roar, they turned to see a sign that said, defeat the evil Hydra, the sign was then blasted apart as a head of the Hydra shot out from the deck and started attacking them, the two boys separated when it lounged for them, the two boys nodded and form a blade of their element as it started to rain, they ran at each other, which was at the beast and sliced off the head, that was, too easy. Unaruto, a hydra usually has a lot of heads, where the main head controls the others, Inari stated as snake-like heads came blasting out of the ship, surrounding them, another head, way bigger than the others came out of the water and roar out, making the two boys pale. Oh shit, were the words that came out of their mouths. They didn't have time to stare for long as the four smaller heads of the hydra attacked them, Inari had to create a water sphere so they wouldn't get hurt. We need to think of a plan and fast, these hydra heads are strong, Inari said as he winced each time a head collided with the sphere. Naruto nodded as he looked at his surroundings through the sphere, there were huge hooks above them, which indicated that this ship was a fishing ship, those hooks could be used to incapacitate the heads for a short time while they take out the main head, to which they had to climb up the mast to even get to, yeah, this could work, what could go wrong? Naruto nodded as he relayed the plan to Inari who thought it was a good plan. With that, Inari let the water spear go and they went to attack the beasts, when they got the first two down, Inari used his water bending skill to pull one of the bladed hooks onto the hydra, while Naruto did the same with his dagger tail, that hooked them to the ship while the boys did the same to the other two heads, they thought they did good until the first two heads broke free. Ah! Oh, Naruto, take care of the main head while I deal with these jerks. Are you sure? Yes, if you don't kill the main head, this cycle of trapping the heads will continue. Now go! yelled Inari as they dodged a strike from the heads. Naruto nodded as he used Chakra to climb up the mast to get to the platform to which he could fight the main head. Meanwhile, Inari had used his water bending skill to freeze the water on the ship so that he would have the speed advantage, after that, he called out his next jutsu, raining ice needles. The rain that neared the battle instantly froze and flew in random directions. Hitting the four heads, those just made them thrash around, Inari smirked as he called his zapper jutsu and while moving quickly to avoid getting hit, he launched small lightning bolts that hit the ends of the ice, which electrified them and in turn, the hydra heads, what he expect, were for them to suddenly explode in a shower of gore, he didn't have time to be grossed out because instead of four, eight heads came out to leer at him. He gulped and used his speed advantage to not get hurt too much. Of course they slammed him a few times but he tried to best not to get killed. Soon he was in the middle of the creatures and sighed he echoed out. Calm waters that signified that he was about to use his special taijutsu. Instantly the ocean began calm down, even though there was a fierce storm going on. He took his bow staff off his back and got into his fight stance. The creatures noticed this and were very confused until Inari struck, still using his speed advantage, he sped toward one of the heads while also creating two water clones to attack the others, his strikes were precise and when he struck, there was a lot of force behind it, because each time he hit them in the neck, their necks snapped back, soon he was in the middle again with his two clones, when he saw the heads disintegrate, and to his horror, sixteen heads rose up, shit, Naruto. Hurry the hell up, he yelled, cried in panic, with Naruto, the same time Inari started fighting. Nerut had gotten to the top and was amazed at how big the head was alone, this will not be easy, he deadpanned, the monster roared and tried to eat him, but he dodged out of the way in time. It seemed to follow him wherever he went, so Naruto decided to get rid of that trait and used his lightning bending to shot out its eyes, it roared out pain as it thrashed around and broke the top part of the mast off and made it sharp and pointy, that gave Naruto a great idea, he jumped atop it and brought out his blade and jumped at it to slash it a few times, but it roared and that alone knocked him back, he almost flew off the platform but he thankfully caught the edge just in time. Naruto growled as he got back up and got another idea, he took out his dagger tail and swung it around the snout of the beast and pulled forward so that it was right above the sharp point of the broken mast, he smirked as he pulled down and it impaled itself in the eyes or what was left of the eyes, as it was trying to get out, he heard Inari's yell and looked over and paled at what he saw, he quickly yelled back, get to the side of the boat then. Inari was confused but weaved his way to the side of the boat as the heads of the creature all looked up at the sound of his voice, Naruto then started a few hands while jumping high in the air above the main head of the beast he brought both hands downward and yelled out, pressure force jutsu. With that, 
A huge blast of high pressure wind blasted downward, as it traveled down, it blew up the main head and kept traveling down and blasted where Inari once stood and blast the heads of the smaller creatures away, along with the middle of the boat. As the boat was sinking, there was a bright flash and Naruto and Inari were in a white room, in front of them, was an old man, who looked to be in his 80s but he was quite muscular. I am Zeus, ruler of the gods, but I am also just an echo of the past, the man said as the two boys got ready to fight, unfortunately, I do not have a challenge for you, I never thought anyone would get past the evil Hydra in the way you did, I grant you too the power of my son, Kratos, destroyer of the gods, with that, the man disappeared, in his place where some wicked looking blades and two wisps of energy, that traveled to the two boys. Wow, that was unexpected, stated a shocked Naruto. Yeah, you take the blades, I don't use blades Inari said as he was trying to figure out his new powers. Naruto nodded and when he reached them he said, it is a good thing I created some storage seals in my coat. The first thing he picked up was the blades of Athena. He placed the golden, serrated blades into two seals. One on each side of the coat, the next was a blade that looked like the inside and parts of the blade was sectioned out and replaced with lightning. He placed the blade of Olympus in the right side of his coat so that he could pull it out with his left hand. The blade of time was in the opposite side, next was what looked like a silver. Ten foot blade that had Greek letters that traveling along the edge of the blade. The middle of the blade were the symbols of each of the titans. Traveling from top to bottom, he placed the blade of the titans in the seal on the back of his collar. It was heavy so he would have to pull this out with both hands. Finally he saw two golden tridents, he sighed and tossed the smaller one to Inari who just shrugged. He could use it since it was like a bow staff, that was one the trident of Triton. The one that Naruto put in a random seal in his coat was the trident of Poseidon. Naruto had also found a piece of golden armor that traveled from shoulder to his wrist, he put that on his right hand, the name of this and its properties came to as it was called the golden fleece. There were also a few other weapons like, the Spear of Destiny, the Barbarian's Hammer, and a few other weapons that he sealed in a scroll and gave to Inari they were not blades and Inari was skilled in weapons like these. After that they were transports back to the entrance that looked like nothing ever happened, Inari, let's just go to the Temple of Fire tomorrow. Fine with me, that was kind of tiring, Inari said as they headed for an inn to rest for the night. As the two boys were getting ready to leave, Naruto noticed something different about his sleeveless black trench coat, the bottom had blue lightning, sparking along the bottom it and on the back was the red spiral of his clan, but it was different, it had a golden omega symbol in it that was crossed by two swords, on the top of that symbol were the words for time sage. He thought it looked cool but was surprised by it, when he asked Inari about it, he said it was probably from that Zeus guy. Now, the two boys were in front of the temple of fire and all it was was a large red dome, okay, this should be easier than I thought. Don't say that, you'll jinx this, jeez Inari, you worry too much. Naruto said as they enter the building to find themselves in a large room that had a pedestal in the middle, it seemed to have a circular piece of something on it, when they were halfway to it, the ground shook, and the pedestal sank into the ground, in its place a twenty foot creature rose and it seemed that it was chained to the ground, it then awoke and burst into a flame like creature and ripped the chains from the ground, at this, the two boys faces paled. You know, sometimes Chicken Little knows what he is talking about, yelled Inari as they got ready to fight. Yeah, yeah, Naruto deadpanned as they saw the creature move, very slowly, they thought that could easily get to it, but as soon as it saw them, it began to flail its arms around, causing the chains to go everywhere, they decided to stay behind it for a while. Got a plan yet? asked Inari, still processing, Naruto said as he took a quickly look around the dome, there was not much he could use this time but he did see a spire above them that held that glass part of the dome together, he then looked at the chain for a second and said, can you make any clones? Are you kidding, this place is a freaking sauna, that thing's fire has taken away all the moisture, the most I can do is those useless mist clones. They are good for one hit Inari, that is all we really need. What are you talking about? Take out the barbarian's hammer and create four of those mist clones, I will then create four shadow clones, they have your mist clones dent the chains into the ground then I will send some lightning its way. You're nuts, you know that don't you? Inari asked and Naruto just chuckled, that plan is so crazy, it might just work. He then took out the hammer from the scroll he was given and then created four mist clones, Naruto did the same with his shadow clones, they both sent their clones to the dragging chains and Inari's clones brought down hell on those chains. The monster was stuck and as it looked around, it saw four Naruto's charge lightning around themselves before sending it up the chains and into the flame monster. 
It roared in pain as the fire was distinguished and the lightning was coursing through it. People outside were now afraid that the monster within the dome was breaking free. Sure they had saw the two boys enter and silently pray for their safe return, but that thing was a monster from ancient times. The monster soon fell to its knees and the moisture in the air finally came back, Naruto smirked and said, freeze it. My pleasure, Inari said, but before he could, the monster started to stand up and THRSH around. Naruto cursed and said, okay fine, I'll fight this thing while you work on freezing this place. Got it, Inari said as he raced around the dome, freezing the floor which then began to creep up the walls to the top of the dome. Naruto thought on what he could do to beat this monster and a thought of sage mode came to mind, but he couldn't get back in it for some reason, another thought to him came and it was an attack he got from the Olympians. Naruto smirked before stand straight and putting his hands in the ram seal, he then shouted out his attack, Spartan's fury. At that the ground shook and even people outside could feel the new power coming out, a blood red aura formed around the boy, changing him a bit, his skin became ghostly pale and a large red line ran over his right cheek, to his eye, and into his hair that was under the bandana, think of the red lines on Kratos from God of War, he would later learn that this attack was a trigger to eventually get to sage mode, but not just for the toads. Naruto smirked at all the power running through him. Good, this should be enough to knock this thing down. He said as he brought out Athena's blades and slashing up the monster with ease. He even used his power over wind to add deadliness to his blades. Finally, he got it to kneel in the middle of the dome and it was bleeding heavily which froze when it touched the ice. Naruto then sealed the blades back into his trench coat and then unsealed the blade of Olympus. He saw that it was filled with lightning and thought of an idea, this should keep him from moving anytime soon, he said as he charged the blade with more of the lightning element and half of his Spartan's fury energy, the lightning in the blade turned red as Naruto pointed out to the monster's chest and when the lightning struck, it roared a very painful roar as the red lightning now coursed through its body and burning its insides out a bit. Inari was now near the spire and saw everything, that was new, he would have seen more but he heard the monster speak. As smoke rose from its lightning charred body, it began to laugh, but not with its own voice and instead of black eyes, they were now red, very good sage of time, using the powers of ancient times, no one has ever though of using that to kill my monster. Who are you? Naruto sneered, he now knew this thing was being controlled. I am what Kailina feared, I am the dark entity that was seal away from even before her time, she was the empress of time and she was afraid of me, yet, you are not, hey, I will make you fear me. Yeah, yeah old man, we will see, I will be the emperor of time and I will make sure you die. Hey, not yet you're not, just know this boy, when you become the emperor, I will soon be freed, then I will make you feel so much pain for your insolence, then I will kill you, you pathetic human. Well see you ass, Inari, now, Naruto yelled, Inari quickly got out of his shock and used the ice to pull the spire out of the top of the dome, he then got down to the ground and away from the center of the room. Just as the spire stuck, the voice said, let it begin then, the spire stuck it through the head and through its body, killing it once and for all, Naruto then flipped out of the way as the glass part of the dome fell in on itself, sending glass and ice chunks down on the already dead body the of the fire creature. As Naruto let the power dissipate and Inari walked next to him, the whole dome glowed a bright golden color as the ice melted away, the glass disappeared and the pedestal appeared once more, the people on the outside had wondered what the hell was going on throughout the whole battle, I mean, the first heard a roar, the ice covered the inside of it, and then the glass part caved in, some of the people had set up lawn chairs just to watch what would happen next. The boys walked over to the pedestal and Naruto picked up the piece of what looked to be a circle. Perhaps the key was a circle and he had to find all the pieces like this one, though he did think that they were all different colors, because, this one was red and had had an odd design on it, not that he could figure it out at the moment because the room was shaking again, the two backed up just as the pedestal sort of blew up and a large fiery red energy rocketed out of the new sky light in the dome and in the direction of mist country. Once there it traveled to an ancient looking rock with five orbs on it and in the middle of the orbs is an indention for the key to go in the red energy slammed into one of the orbs as it now began to glow red. Back with the boys, they were just as confused at the spectators outside the dome, yea no, this is getting weirder by the moment, deadpanned Inari. I couldn't agree more, Naruto commented as he pinched the bridge of his nose, he then placed his sunglasses back on and the two walked to see a roaring audience and the fire lord was there as well. Well done sage of time, the old man said, Naruto was about to question why he call him Naruto when the boy saw a few leaf shinobi, yeah well, it was pain but me and the reptile sage got it done. 
I would expect nothing less, I also must thank you boys, you see that monster has been a pain in the sense that we could not explore the dome more, that is why I had the key and gave it to you. Right, Naruto said as he gave the old man the flame like key back, I guess it is time for us to go, we do have journey after all. Of course, good luck kid, yeah, I think we will need it, Naruto sighed out as he put a hand on Inari's shoulder and the azure flashed out of the city. A few days later, Konoha, everyone in Konoha was a little shake at what happened a while ago, Tsunade was a little worse for wear but she will be okay. As she was at her desk doing paperwork, Shizune came with a letter. Tsunade-sama, this is a letter from the Fire Lord, she said meekly. The blonde woman quickly snatched the letter from her assistant and nodded to herself that this was indeed a letter from the Fire Lord as it has his seal on it, she quickly opened it and started reading. Dear Tsunade, it has been a while, but I am informing you of something important, the Sage of Time and his traveling partner. The Reptile Sage are on the move now, I am not sure where at the moment, but if you send some of Naruto's old friends after him, you just might find where Naruto is, he is alive the two are connected, good luck. Fire Lord, Tsunade's eyes twitched at the mon's calmness, even in a letter like this, Shizun. Get me Naruto's friends. With Naruto and Inari, a week or so after they left the capital. The boys had just entered the village hidden in the mist and boy were they surprised, they were expecting to get a shitload of dirty looks and get roughed around a lot, but that was not the case, the place wasn't even gloomy like in the stories. This place also looked a lot like Venice, the streets were all water, the freaking city built on top of water. The place was full of life and as they people random people, they were bowed to and given thankful smiles, some of them girls though, they were give the two some lustful and jealous looks, like they knew who they were dating. Okay. They is freaking me out, Inari said quietly to Naruto. Eh, you get used to it, though, now I am starting to think there's something we did the past for them, I wonder what though. Naruto, the only thing I can think of that we would have helped them about is the bloodline purges, and I would have stopped that crap. That is the only thing we know of the Mist Village. True, Naruto said as he looked up the buildings to see Anbu watching them, one of them however, a wolf masked one to be exact, dashed away from the group into the Mizukage's tower into the distance. Well, at least we be a surprise to them, he said as Inari just gave him a look. With the Mizukage, the Mizukage was different in the sense that it was a she, like Tsunade, she was not any woman, no sir, she was none other than Meitarumi as she was hot, she had long rust red hair that went down to her ankles. Jade green eyes but one of them was hidden behind her hair which was also done in a topknot. She wore a blue kimono like battle dress over a fishnet dress and some blue shinobi sandals. She was currently doing the bane of all cages, paperwork. Luckily, she was interrupted by one of her anbu. She looked up to see it was one of her old friends. Wolf, take of the mask please, she said with a small smile. Yes, milady, came the feminine voice behind the mask. Once it was off, the Paran was revealed to have beautiful dark skin with her hair sort of braided. Now then Katara, what's up? They're here, and he was right, they're the age when we first meet them, came Katara's happy voice but a little sad as well, should we take in his advice and pretend to not to know them all that well? Unfortunately, we must, or it might never happen, May sighed, I just wish I could to talk to him like we did, but we must do as he says as to not freak them out. Al all right, Katara stuttered, just then, there was a knock on the door and the secretary said that they were here. May ordered for them to be let in as Katara put her mask back on. Once they walked in, they had to bite back the urge to hug the boys, as soon as the two boys were in front of them and sitting down in the chairs provided for them, May spoke, well to the village hidden in the mist, so how can I help the sage of time and the sage of reptiles? Oh and don't mind me being a lady cage. Naruto snorted and said, hey, don't worry about that. I figure any chick could be a cage if they were powerful enough, just look at Tsunade, she is the Hokage and she is freaking old. Inari sighed and smacked the back of Naruto's head, come on bro, don't be rude to a cage. The two women almost laughed, this was how it was back in the day for them. Naruto on the other hand was just rubbing the back of his head in embarrassment. He could swear that this May had a look of longing in her eyes that was directed at him. He just didn't know why. Inari also felt that he was being stared at by the wolf masked Anbu, sorry, well, since you know who we are like everyone else I have met, could you please tell how to get to the temple of water, it was at that moment that Naruto felt another presence in the room, bend the door to their right, but it didn't seem Link it was hostile, he thought had this may had a Konohamaru problem like the old man did. I am sorry, but the entrance to the temple is gone, the only way to go there is to go to the past. Mk, how far are we talking about, how old are you now? 
14 then to the time of when you would have been too, she replied. Okay then, that doesn't seem as bad as I though it would be, come on Inari, we got to got to the past. As they got up, he heard Inari say under his breath, great, we are going to the time of the bloodline purges. Well, thanks Mizukage sama time travel jutsu, Naruto said then yelled as he transported himself and Inari to the past. After the lightning had died down, Mei let out a single tear before saying, all right Harui, you can come out now. Ah man, you always seem to know where I am, so was that Tama? A girl said as she walked into the room and set herself on Mei's lap, she was about nine years old, had shoulder length rust red hair with the tips of them being spiky and yellow, she had a red dress on that had the ocean on the bottom of it and red shinobi sandals. Yes, Harui, that was Tama Kohaku, the sage of time, Mei said. Ah man, I should have came out to get his autograph. But but? You would know would know him as Naruto Uzumaki, your father, Mei said as the little girl's eye went as big as dinner plates and then a big smile cracked along her face before she began cheering. In the Mizukage's office was a boy who looked to be in his late teens, his name was Yugura, he had greenish blonde hair, violet eyes with his left cheek had a violet line running down it which also looked like stitches, he had a grey bodysuit with a green turban-like scarf around his neck, a headband on his waist that acted like a belt and grey shinobi sandals. He was currently talking to two of his ninja when a ball of lightning appeared in the middle of the room, he quickly waved his anbu off as he was intrigued and also had an idea of what this was, he was proven correct as two figures appeared out of the lightning, shooking the two young ninja he was speaking to before, the younger one spoke first. Ah man, that is something we'll never get used to, Inari spoke. Hey, geez Inari, you didn't complain this much when he saved your father from Gato. Yeah well, I was holding it in, Inari said but was interrupted by a cough. Oh right, sorry for ignoring you Mizukage sama my name is Tama Kohaku, he spoke loudly before Inari smacked the back of his head. Geez, you gotta be so loud and rude? Anyway, I am Inari. I know who you two are, the famous sage of time and sage of reptiles, Yugura said with a small smile, what can I do for you two? Well, I was wondering if you could help us by giving the key to the temple of water. At this, Yugura frowned, I cannot help you with that at the moment, one being I have no clue where the entrance to it is and two, I do not trust you enough yet to give you the key so willingly, I do have a solution to that though you both become my shinobi to gain my trust. The two boys looked to one another and knew that they would be here for a while if they did join, they also didn't have much of a choice as they needed the key and they kind of had all of time anyway, they nodded to each other and Naruto said, sure why, not, if that what it takes, then fine. Very well, here are your headbands, Yugura said as he pulled two headbands out of his desk and tossed them to the boys, tomorrow, you will have to fight one of my ninja of choice so I can figure out how to rank you, Mei, Katara show them to an inn, they must rest for tomorrow, teal the innkeeper I will pay for it later. The two now identified girls nodded as they lead the boys out the room, but before they really left, Naruto stopped at the door and said, my real name is Naruto Uzumaki, oh and you should use some sort of clone jutsu to get that paperwork done quicker, he then left to catch up with the others. Yagura just gawked at the empty doorway before creating fake anime tears with a fist pumping the air, thank you Naruto Uzumaki, you just gained a little of my trust by helping me defeat the ultimate cage's bane, Yugura said as he created two water clones and stood watching them and giggling hysterically while the demon in him just rolled its eyes. With Naruto, the two girls had lead the two boys down an alley and stopped, Naruto noticed that this Mei was about 13 years old and her hair was to her butt, and her breasts were smaller, but she looked about that same they saw her in the future, Katara was a dark skinned girl who looked to be 10 years old, she had blue clothes on, she looks the same as she does in Avatar. Mei suddenly spoke after casted a silencing just around them, it is hard to believe that you two are the sages Yugura was talking about, but I guess you could be, now I have a question for you two and you better answer right if you want us to your friends, we are part of the resistance that secretly sabotages Yugura's attempts at killing people with bloodlines and his evil reign, we are also trying to regain his trust and then eventually kill him, so, which side are you two on? The two boys looked at each other and snorted, kind of up front aren't you, but in all seriousness, we would be with you. Our reasons are because we think this bloodline purges thing is useless and stupid, that and we both have bloodlines. The girls blinked at this and Katara asked, what bloodlines do you have? My bloodline lets me turn into water, Inari stated. I got the Rinengan and I guess I am the second of the time bloodline Naruto said. Ah, that is good, I have two as well, boil release and lava release while Katara here does not have a bloodline. Sure, 
Rub it in my face, May, the younger girl fake pouted. Hey, glad to have friends who think like us, Naruto said and the girls smiled. Glad to hear that, May said as she released the silence jutsu and they began to walk again. So, what do you mean regain his respect? Inari asked. We were the students of Zabuza Momochi, we went on a mission and lost our third member. Zabuza sensei got angry and tried to kill Yagura on his own and failed. He somehow survived and fled the village. He is now a missing nin, Katara said sadly. Yeah and now we don't have a team and we must regain Yagura's respect after Zabuza sensei destroyed it and made Yagura question our loyalty, Mei said with an annoyed smile. The two boys looked at each other and smiled, oh, so your sensei was old no brows. The two girls face vaulted as their third team member had only spoke about and to their sensei like that, how do you two know Zabuza sensei? The girls both asked at the same time. Well, first of all, I am originally from Konoha and my team ran into him and his apprentice on our first C rank mission. That mission is also where I met Inari, whose grandfather was his target that he was supposed to kill, they both took turns tell the story of the wave mission to the two girl until they made it to the inn, on the way there, they noticed that the streets were different then in the future, they were dark and hardcore ninja were sharpening their weapons and giving the group crazed smirks. To say the two girls were shocked by the end of the story was a bit off. They cried that their sensei would be dead and so would his apprentice. Naroro comforted Mei while Inari put a comforting hand on Katara, who no sensei would end it like that, but he would always help us if we were in trouble. I hope you find happiness in the afterlife with our old teammate, Mei said as she leaned her head on Naruto's shoulder. When they got to the inn, she quickly got off as they went inside the told the innkeeper what do. As the two girls left Mei said, thanks Naruto, you really are a good person. Neru just smiled and thanked her, while blushing a bit, when they left, Inari smirked and said, I saw that. What? That look, you got a crush on her don't ya? I don't know what you're talking about, denied Naruto and blushed a bit. Whatever bro, Inari said as they went to their rooms, the innkeeper just rolled his eyes and muttered something about being young before whipping out a familiar orange book and started giggling. The next day, Yugura's office the two boys were standing at attention in front of Yugura's desk. Well, the ninja I wanted to you two fight are out on a mission, but I have a better idea anyway, you will fight Mei and Katara, a one-on-one -on -one battle each. Uh, okay, said Naruto, don't worry, they are a real challenge, Mei is a chunin but her skills are higher than what they seem, same with Katara, now, let's head to the area, with that, they left. Once at the arena, they noticed that it was a stadium that faced the ocean, okay, that is new, Inari deadpanned. Yes it is. Now I want Naruto to fight first, Yawar stated, you will fight Mei. Alright, Naruto said and then Azure flashed to the arena, Yagura arched an eyebrow but just waved it off thinking that it was Naruto's special shunshin. When Naruto got here, he noticed that the stands were packed, hey, he is going to give them a show to remember. A few minutes later, Mei walked onto the water of the arena. It is a pleasure being able to fight you, Naruto, Mei flirted. Same to you, it is an honor fighting a lady as beautiful as yourself, Naruto quipped with a bow. Shall we cut right to the fun then? Mei said with a small blush and smirk. Yeah, let's get wild, Naruto said as he got into a battle stance. Yes, let's, back in the stands, Inari smacked his head while Yagura deadpanned, Griad, two dangerous flirts. With an unspoken signal, the two rushed at each other, settling for a taijutsu fight at the moment, they punch and kicked at each other either dodging or blocking the other's attack, when Mei finally got a solid hit in Naruto's chest, the blonde backflipped and then flipped over the girl and kicked her in the head, sending a few feet. When she got back up, she quickly went through a set of hand signs before yelling out, Water Jets Jutsu. Sudden blasts of water shot right at him and he cursed under his breath, he flipped over one while bringing out the Blade of Time and the Blade of Olympus, he then sliced the next two with each blade and when another came, he put one of his blades away and used the golden fleece to absorb the attack, channeled it through his blade of time and sent it right back Mei with more force as it knocked her back in surprise. She growled as she got back up and noticed a small smile on Naruto's lips, that smile was infectious and she smiled too before doing more hand signs and yelling out, raging waves. She brought huge ass wave up and shot them at Naruto who cursed and tried blocking the waves, he cut one in half and tried to push another away with his sword but others slamming into it and knocked Naruto back and got his soaked. Naruto got back up and said, not bad, but I am sure you can do better. His taunt worked as Mei smirked and thought, time to use that new jutsu I have working on, she then did some hand signs that Katara recognized. 
Well, Naruto is screwed, Katara said. Why do you say that? asked Inari. Mei is performing her new jutsu and I don't think that Naruto has a counter to it. Hey, you'd be surprised. Mei finished her set of hand seals and yelled out, 1000 raging cyclones. Huge cyclone rose up around her and it gave her a pretty menacing look with that smile of hers. Naruto and Inari both paled, oh shit, come on, I never even seen a jutsu like this. Come on Naruto. Think, it was then that Naruto remembered his wind vortex, well, here goes nothing, hope this works. Wind vortex jutsu. Naruto yelled as the cyclones were almost to him, he held out his right arm out and a small pocket of air appeared and violently sucked in all the cyclones, there was only one problem. It was too much for Naruto as he held his arm in pain and he called out his next jutsu while pointing his arm at the sky, wind vortex cannon JUSTU. A huge swell of wind and water blew out of his arm and from a gained wind and water cyclone, Naruto quickly jumped on it and preformed another jutsu that was aimed at Mei, who paled at Naruto's skill with water and wind, giant dragon of wind and water. The giant cyclone morphed into a giant Chinese dragon that crashed right into Mei, creating a monster of a wave. Wah! Wow. What the hell was that? Mei brings out her new jutsu and he busts that out. Katara yelled from her seat. Inari, who was sitting next to her, put his pinky finger in his ear and said, Do you have to yell? She just gave him an annoyed look, anyway. Naruto is a genius at improvising in the heat of battle, I didn't even know he could do the huge dragon jutsu though, must have made it on the spot. Impressive, but this is far from over, she still has that one jutsu, right Katara? Observed Yagura then stated. The girl looked confused for a second before a smirk flashed across the girl's face as they looked back to the battle while Inari was confused. As the wave died down, they saw stand on the water, looking for Mei. Mei slowly rose out of the water behind him and put a kanai. Nice one didn't expect my own attack to be sent back at me like that. Mei whispered into his ear, making him shiver and blush a bit before smirking. Glad you liked it, but you're not the only one who replaced themselves with a clone at the last minute, he said back as he poofed away leaving a surprised Mei who stumbled forward as she was pressing herself against him. You think I was crazy enough to hop on that cyclone myself? He said as he appeared a few feet from her. You mean a clone you did that dragon jutsu? Mei asked surprised. Yep, and now it is my turn to bust out a jutsu that Inari and I have been working on, though it should be performed by two people, oh well, I guess that is what shadow clones are for. He smirked at her shocked look and did the right hand sign for his signature jutsu. Inari just sighed at Naruto's impatience, idiot better not kill himself, at this the other two looked at him with confused expressions, you'll see. Multi-shadow clone jutsu. Naruto yelled out as over 100 clones came into existence. Shocking everyone, most thought that this kid must have huge chakra reserves or had excellent chakra control. Mei just paled as she looked around her frantically at all the Naruto's, now, to test out this jutsu, he said as he did some hand signs and yelled. Melody of the Ocean. The name itself made a lot of people sweat drop until they saw the ocean morph into huge musical instruments and the Naruto's jumped to them. What everyone thought was the real Naruto had water fly up to his hands as it formed a microphone. Hey, y'all like? Naruto's voice echoed throughout the ocean and everyone heard it. Let's rock. The music began to play and people knew that this was a rock song that would really rock the ocean. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the F L O R R R R R R R R R. At this point, huge wave of water rushed at poor May as he quickly dodged out of the way. Beaten wifer, wifer, can't take much more. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. One, nothing wrong with me. Two, nothing wrong with me. Three, nothing wrong with me. Four, nothing wrong with me. May had gotten in close and punched Naruto, only to find out that he was a clone and the music just picked up again, she frantically looked for the real Naruto in this crazy music storm. 1. Something's got to give 2. Something's got to give. 3. Something's got to give now let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor, the hit the floor. now. Mei somehow spotted the real Naruto and rushed him, they began to do simple taijutsu, bot smirking like crazy. Push me again, this is the end. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. 1. Nothing wrong with me. 2. Nothing wrong with me. 3. Nothing wrong with me. 4. Nothing wrong with me. 1. Something's got to give. 2. Something's got to give. 3. 
Something's got to give now let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor skin against skin blood and bone. You're all by yourself but you're not alone you wanted and now you're here. The fight began to escalate as they used jutsu to get back at the other, to the audience, this was an epic battle that they enjoyed. Driven by hate consumed by fear let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor 1, nothing wrong with me. 2, nothing wrong with me 3, nothing wrong with me. 4, nothing wrong with me 1, something's got to give. 2, something's got to give 3, something's got to give. Now let the bodies hit the floor let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor let the bodies hit the floor. When the song died down, they could see Naruto and Mei panting heavily, Naruto, one more attack, let's end this, Mei stated as Naruto nodded, she then did hand signs for her next jutsu, great blades of water, two kitchen cleaver like blades formed into each of her hands. Naruto smirked, so, she wants to end this with a final blade strike eh? Find with me, it'll just try that out, we, if that is the way you want to go. Naruto trailed off as he took the blade of time and the blade of Olympus out of their seals and threw them into the air. As they came down he brought Athena's blades out and used his chakra to connect them to the bigger blades, he snapped the chains so that they would go back up in the air as he took out of the titan's blade, he then did the same with the all the blades and combined them for a short time, he thus created, blade of time's will. He did have help wielding it with the chains, but it was still too heavy for him, so he activated Spartan's fury and gained the strength to do so, ya ready? At first Mei was shocked at this new development, but she guessed she should have expected something like this, yay. So with that, they charged at each other and in a flash, the were at opposite ends and had their backs to each other, in reality, when Mei swung both her blades, he knocked them away and then hit a certain pressure point that lets the affected have a minute of consciousness before passing out. With her eyes shadowed and a smile on her face, she said, handsome, strong, and kind, what a good combination for some like you. Naruto smirked and said, you didn't do to bad Mei. Thanks, she replied before falling as she passed out, in an azure flash, he caught her before that and put his blades away, they then flashed to the stands next to Yagura, he gently put her in seat and sat down himself, man, even if I got almost infinite chakra that still wore me out. Truly impressive Naruto Uzumaki, I would say you are truly a part of my village now, now, Inari, Katara, you turn. Okay. Since I am have a major headache and I kept getting interrupted, I am going to make this quick. The battle between Inari and Katara had been short to say the least, unfortunately, Mei had only woken up in the middle of the battle, so she saw the last half of it, Inari had shown his still with Genjutsu by casting his own illusion, fear of the deep, but sadly it was not strong enough for Katara as she quickly dispelled it. Katara began to brag about being an expert waterbender but Inari had set her down to the level she was at by beating her with his bending she never expected him to bend the water into steam and ice. Yagura and Mei had been surprised that there was another waterbender since there was not a lot of them in the mist, it was a welcome surprise nonetheless and it seemed to spark a rivalry between the two. Now back in the Mizukage's office, Yagura spoke, I am impressed with the four of you, these battles have let me see how good you are, Naruto and Mei, you are now Jonin, you will also be part of my swordsman of the mist, I needed two more since most of the originals are gone. Wow, didn't expect that, Naruto said surprises next to Mei. Yes, now Inari will be a chunin with Katara and when you two are not taking missions with the other swordsmen, you four will be a team, got it? They collectively nodded and Yagura continued, Oh and Inari, since you are the reptile sage, you can have this summoning scroll for turtles since the only good turtle is the one inside me. To this he got blank looks from the boys, no reactions to that? Inari just shrugged and said, kinda pointless to be angry at someone with a demon in them, you guys don't have any control over that fact. Yeah, I used to be one, ah, uh, I see, I guess you may go now, with that they left, as they left, Yagura thought, they're interesting, just who are you two? It has been a year since Naruto and Inari joined the hidden mist village, during that time, Inari and Katara become rivals, pushing each other to greater lengths, they would argue too much though and that annoyed Naruto and Mei, and gave Yagura a headache each time he heard them no one really knew it, and not even them, but they had developed a crush on each other. Naruto and Mei had become good friends that would flirt with each other a lot. 
This just annoyed the two younger members of the team because they knew Naruto and Mei had major crushes on each other. The two had gotten along well in the Seven Ninja Swordsmen of the Mist. He became the Olympian of the Mist while Mei became the Waterblade Mistress. They met Kisame, who Naruto because good friends with, Raiga, who left about halfway through the year because he couldn't stand the Mizukage, and Shojiro, who was only a few years older than Naruto. Some of the other newer members were Kenpachi, who was a berserker, his daughter Yachiru, who was an expert in cat like blades, and Nero, who was an expert in shadow blades. They were all part of the resistance along with a few others like Ao. Right now, however, Team Mailstorm, Kisame, and Ao were in front of Yugura in his office. My mission for you all is simple we have a problem at the border. Sanbi's enemy has come, the three headed shark. He looking for strong warriors and the Sanbi himself. I order you to kill it so I don't have to. Now go. As soon as they left, he pulled out a familiar orange book. Ever Naruto helped with the paperwork problem, he had more time in his life, this gave him something to do. So, after that left to get to the border and after an hour of ninja style running over water, they were half a mile away from the giant shark, Naruto, the unofficial leader, said, you guys ready for this? Yes, Ao you know it bro, Inari said with a thumbs up. Yay. I am going hurt more than you do Inari, Katara agreed with Inari. Yay, let's spill its blood. Kisame yelled as he hefted his giant blade. Oh I am always ready Naruto-kun. Mei flirted as she leaned next to him. Oh and since Yugura doesn't care how we kill it, how about we use our bloodlines? Fine with me. How about you guys? Asked Naruto as they all nodded. Let's get wild. And with that they charged at the giant beast in their own ways. Inari sank into the water, merging with it as he raced off, infuriating Katara as she bended the water to jet off to the shark. Ao just water sunshine to it. Kisame too sank underwater a sonic boom to it and rammed it with his blade. Hey, let's make this interesting shall we? Naruto asked. What do you have in mind? Asked Mei. Naruto smirked as he took off his bandana and sunglasses. He eyes then changed to the Rinnegan and his six bodies appeared. He then did some hand signs to create some shadow clones and melody of the ocean. Mei smirked as Naruto said. Agitate the hell out of it. So what song will you be singing? Naruto smiled and said, Ice Ice Baby. Oh, sounds fun, Mei said as they rushed in while the Naruto clones began the song. Ice Ice Baby Remix, Yo VIP, Let's Kick It, Ice Ice Baby, Vanilla Ice Ice Baby to Cold, Cold. It started as they all rushed in to attack the giant shark, Haku and Inari used ice to get their way up to the top of the beast. Alright stop, collaborate and listen, Ice is back with a brand new invention, something grabs a hold of me tightly, flown like a harpoon daily and nightly, will it ever stop yo? I don't know. Mei started to shoot lava at the metal that Naruto's metal realm created, melting it as it shot to the shark, searing its flesh. Ao used to buy Kugan to direct Nawaka's wood to impale the shark at some of its chakra points, destroying some of them. Turn of the lights and ill glow, to the extreme. I want the mic like a vandal, light up the stage, ill watch the chump like a candle, dance, spockin' them booms, killin' your brain like a poisonous mushroom, deadly, like I play a dope melody. Anything less than the best is a felony. Kisame started chaffing the shark's back, making it roar out in pain, while Katara was slashing it with sharpened water. Love it or leave it, you better gain weight, better hit the poolside that kid don't play and if there was a problem yo ill solve it. Check out the hook while my DJ revolves it, the ocean itself was rocking the shark around and annoying the hell out of it while the ninja were really doing some damage to it, the Hyuga Rin was working with the Uchiha realm in destroying some of its chakra points, Haku, Inari and Katara then froze one of its giant fins when Naruto and Kisame broke it off with their blades. Ice Ice Baby, come on come on, Ice Ice Baby, Ice Ice Baby, yay, Ice Ice Baby to cold to cold, now that the part Y is jumping, with the bass kicked in and the figures are pumping, click to the point to the point no faking, cooking MCs like a pound of bacon, burning up, but not quick and nimble, I go crazy when I hear a cymbal, in hi-hat super tempo, I am on a roll, time to get solo, okay. This a pain in the ass, ill just finish the battle. In the shark's rage, it set off shark frenzy, it thrashed around and knocked Naruto's realms away. Kisame flew off and into the iced fin, Ao just got out of the way as huge waves came after him, Mei was not so lucky, because unlike the others, she didn't get away in time, Katara watched in horror as her sister figure was slashed upward by the good fin, since it was blade-like, she got a diagonal slash across her back as blood flowed from it. The three headed shark positioned itself under her so that they could rend her alive. Naruto's blood boiled at that, 
He didn't want this thing hurting her at all. He quickly rushed in while unconsciously bring out the blade of time's will. He then bypassed Spartan's furry and yelled out his next attack. Rage of the gods Naruto's aura skyrocketed as it turned silvery blue along with the tribal marking on his face. They all watched as Naruto rushed the big beast ASN cut off the middle head, created a shadow clone to catch Mei before the other head got to her, and then sent some chakra to the blade. This time though, it split in half Naruto was shocked for a few seconds before he decided to use it to this to his advantage. He swung in both ways and cut the other heads off as he then swung around to chop the shark's body to bits. When all was said and done, Naruto to Inari and Katara and said, Can you two heal her with your healing water? Of course. The two said then glared at each other. No fighting, Naruto yelled, not wanting to waste time. Right. The two saluted as they began healing Mei's back, leaving no trace of it ever being there. Mei slowly woke up to see Naruto sitting next to her. What happened? If you wanted to sleep with me, you could have asked first. The other sweat dropped as Naruto blushed a bit as he told what had happened. That attack got me thinking, I don't like to see you get hurt, so will you go out with me when we get back? Mei just stared at him for a few minutes before smiling and saying, I have been waiting for you to say that for a long time, my answer is yes, she said as she leaned herself against him. He blushed a lot as helped her to her feet as they walked back home, Kisame and Inari looked at each other before smirking and saying, about time. Naruto picked up Mei at her and Katara's place, since they lived together, Katara was able to help her sister figure out a lot better if she didn't live in the same place, it was also her that opened the door for Naruto. Hey, Katara, Naruto said. Hey Naruto, she smirked as she let Naruto in, Mei will be down in a second, she then left to go up Starry, but not before taking in Naruto's look in, he wore some nice black dress shoes, some black dress pants, and a white dress shirt, in her opinion, Mei was going to be happy. He looked quite handsome after all. After five minutes of waiting, he heard her come down. As she came down, his jaw dropped. Her hair might have been in its usual style, but it made her look beautiful in his opinion. She had a stunning blue dress that has waves etched onto it to make it look exotic as it hugged her every curve, and to finish it off, she wore blue high heel shoes. All in all, he thought she looked very beautiful. It seemed that she approved of his attire as well because she was blushing a bit. She thought he looked like a Greek god. Naruto decided to be a real gentleman and bowed while saying, Shall we go milady? She blushed a bit and said, Yes as my prince charming has finally arrived, she then linked her arm around his and gave him a quick peek on the cheek, making him blush. With that, they left the house and began to walk to one of the good restaurants in the hidden mist village, which was a seafood restaurant, they never saw Katara leaving the house to follow them, or the other shadows of their friends following them either. Once inside the restaurant, the waiter had them seated he asked for their orders. Mei got the sushi while Naruto ordered the lobster. After that, they made small talk, wheel that happened. He noticed that Yagura and a few others were there eating as well. Yagura just wanted something to eat and he coiled get the food for free because he was the Mizukage, he made sure of that. Naruto also saw Chojuro with a cute blonde that he knew to be a girl named Hitome. Seems that shy swordsman finally got some courage to ask her out, not that he could blame him, it took him almost losing Mei to finally ask her out, then the food came and they ate in silence. After that, he took her out for a walk until they came upon a rowboat, Mei looked at Naruto with a smirk and thought that he must have planned this, they quickly got in and Naruto started rowing down the river like streets toward a cave. While that was happening, Katara, Inari, and surprisingly Kisame were jumping rooftops to follow them, Inari chuckled as he and Kisame did a summoning jutsu and told them to set the mood. Time for a little fun, Inari said as the three of them chuckled, normally. Inari wouldn't care but he had tried to stop Katara from spying on them, that didn't work because he got dragged along as well and since he was with Kisame at the time, the shark man decided to come along as well, they watched their summons got other summons to help as well. As the two rode down the way, a song began to play, not that they noticed because they were too lost in each other's eyes. A small hydra, Mace summon, suddenly same out of the water near the boat as frogs and other creatures poofed into existence, it began to sing, there you see her, Sitting there across the way, she don't got a lot to say, but there's something about her. And you don't know why, but you're dying to try, you gotta kiss the girl, said the Hydra as it came close to Naruto's ear. Did you hear something? asked Naruto as he was broken away from the stair. Mei just shook her herd before a couple of turtles slowly spun the boat a bit, they noticed that there were a bunch of summons, watching them and setting the mood, not that they minded, they thought it was nice. The Hydra started again and this time he was joined by a few baby alligators, yes, you want her, look at her, you know you do, possible she wants you too, there is only one way to ask her, 
at the end of that a phoenix sang as she flew by. It don't take a word, not a single word, go on and kiss the girl, the hydra sang as he was joined at the end by a low baritone shark, as the boat entered the cave, the hydra dove in underwater and said, sing with me now. A bunch of toads jumped out of the water and landed on the walls of the cave with some and fish popping their head out of the water singing, sha la 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 la, my oh my, look like the boy to shy, he ain't gonna kiss the girl, the sang as they almost kissed but Naruto pulled back to row a bit with a big blush on his face, sha la 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 la, ain't that sad, ain't it a shame, too bad, he gonna miss the girl, they sang as the two blushed a bit more at the words. Mei then took Naruto's hand as they floated a bit more in Tati Cave as the moonlight bounced off the walls, hitting some crystals, now's your moment, floating in the blue lagoon, boy, you better do it soon, no time will be better, sang the Hydra, she don't say a word and she ain't gonna say a word until you kiss her. The two started to lean closer to each other as they animal sung. Katara, Inari, AMD Kisame, who were hanged into a fish, a alligator, and a shark, were watching the whole thing with dinner plate sized eyes. Soon they and the rest of the animals, which consisted of fish, crocs, alligators, two phoenixes, a few hydras, a couple of sharks, a few turtles, and a whole lot of frog began to girl the rest of the song in the stunningly beautiful lunar cave, making it echo loud enough that most of the village heard it. Sha la 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 don't be scared you got the mood prepared, ya 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 ya, go on and kiss the girl, sha la 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 la, whoa whoa, don't stop now, don't try to hide it, how you gonna kiss the girl? Whoa whoa, they sang as they leaned in closer. Sha la 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 la, float along and listen to the song, they say kiss the girl, sha la 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 la, the music play, do what the music say, you gotta kiss the girl, they sang as the couple was centimeters away from each other. You've gotta kiss the girl, you wanna kiss the girl, you've gotta kiss the girl, go on and kiss the girl they all finished as they all leaned in to watch the two finally kiss, they did and the animals poofed away leaving the five humans there alone. As the two lovers stared to make out, Kisame took the two crying in joy kids and sunshined out of the cave, they were still cry when they noticed that they were also hugging each other and quickly leapt off each with blushes on their faces, Kisame just rolled his eyes and thought that the two should just hook up already, he then noticed something, hey, wasn't that song from Little Mermaid? The two kids just palm faced themselves before just was walking away, yeah I got a soft side, just hope those two don't figure it out, thanks for watching.